Good afternoon and welcome to beautiful Hudson Fields here at Hazen Union High School in Hartford, Vermont. Historical game today, the first ever semifinal baseball playoff game played here at Hazen Union. Your Hazen Union Wildcats hosting the Thetford Panthers today. Winner of this game to go on to play Saturday at Centennial Field against the winner of the Bellows Falls Terriers People's Academy Wolves matchup going on at the same time. Speaking of the People's Academy Wolves, my co-host today, James Salvis. James, how you doing? I'm very good, Lance. How are you today? I'm looking forward to a great baseball game today. Jim on camera. Sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. They support Hazen Athletics. And the Hardwick Village Restaurant, 472-5701. Breakfast all day. And opening pitch just a few moments away. James, what do you make of the game today? Well, you know, Lance, I think today is going to be a really, really good game, but it's also going to be, I think, a tough game on both sides. Stepford, very, very good baseball program, tough baseball program, good athletic program uh, there as well. Uh, good basketball team, good soccer team. Same with Hazen. So today should be a real uh, barn burner. I know that's more of a basketball term, but... No. If I remember right, Thetford knocked us out in the semifinal last year down they, in Thetford, correct? They did. That was a great game. Yeah. Um, Hazen mounted a comeback only to come up just a little bit short. They did. Uh, they were actually down 8 nothing in that game, Lance. And they uh, wound up to tie it, and they wound up losing 9-8. to eight, So go figure there. That's a high-scoring game for baseball. You don't see that often. Definitely. Uh, once again, uh, Hazen comes in with a record of 14-2. and two. Thetford at 11-4. and four. So yeah, we should see some great baseball today. We got good weather so far. A little bit of wind blowing in our faces here. Oh yeah, that Hall Mountain steady. Vortex. The Hall Mountain Vortex in full effect today. It is. But, uh, and Hazen got here via a uh, bye in the first round. Then they beat Williamstown 10 zip in the second round on the strength of a Lyle Rooney no hitter. Yes. So uh, some great pitching there. They sure did. On the other side of the bracket, People's Academy had two. They had a uh, first round win against U32, or Randolph, I'm sorry, they did. First round win against Randolph, and then they beat Montpelier 8-2 uh, to two in the second round game, and now they, like you said today, go to play Bellows Falls. Now they're playing NPA or? They're at Bellows Falls. At Bellows Falls, that's a long haul. It is. Uh, I remember, Lance, get this, so my sophomore year of high school, so that would have been 2017, the fall of 2017, the, the soccer teams, PA played Stowe for the championship that year, and they had to go to Bellows Falls. Wow. So, Yep. Long drive. That made no sense to me for two teams 10 minutes away from each other. Yeah. Maybe even less than. Yeah. Hazen, of course, chasing championship gold. The last time a uh, baseball championship was won here at Hazen was 40 years ago, 1982, the year I graduated high school. And uh, I remember some of the guys in my class uh, almost late for graduation that day because, of course, championship game played over at Centennial Field. Yes. Wildcats taking the field. I'll do a uh, quick rundown of our defensive lineup today, Lance. We Go for got it. Monk, uh, James Montgomery behind the plate. Aisha Gould at first. Tyson Davison at second. Andrew the Mahler Menard at third base. Ty uh, Tyler Rivard at shortstop. In left field, we have Jas Zendik. In center field, we have Jaden Baker. And in right field, we have uh, Wyatt Flanders. And on the mound? And on the mound, the one and only Lyle Rooney. Right the ace of the staff for this Hazen Wildcat team. Lyle has pitched well for the last couple of years, absolutely. I think you could call him the uh, Greg Maddox of the Hazen Wildcats. Absolutely. Cats, of course, coached by Spencer Howard, assisted by Opie Upson and Joe Rebart. Really, really great staff here for the Wildcats as well. Spencer Howard was, uh, I believe he was a part of that 2007 team, Lance, the last baseball team at Hazen to make a state championship appearance. I think you are right. He was a senior that year. Same with, uh, you know, the great Tristan Southworth. Yes. Down there, his number retired on the wall. What an athlete he was. Absolutely. Wearing his T-shirt today. Sure are. I was trying to think back to class of 82, the guys that were in my class that were on that championship team. I know I'm going to forget somebody, but I'll try. I know... Uh, Joe Bellavance was on there, Tim Whitney, Greg Barnes, Alan Della Richelier. A couple big uh, big names in terms of Hazen Athletics yeah. there, huh? Um, a couple of the underclassmen, of course, Bill Farrell was a great pitcher on that team. Uh, Joe's younger brother, Johnny Bellavance, behind the plate, was like all-world catcher. Um, That's Wyatt's dad, right? The guy was, yes. Guy, uh, no. Joe nope. is Wyatt's dad. Nope, right? Jim is Wyatt's Jim. dad. Did he play baseball? Jim played as well. Um... I know I can't remember. Sherman Kubuth was on that team. 
Um, I know I'm forgetting some people, but I'm going back 40 years as well. But I do remember them coming back for graduation and being some excited with uh, the trophy. having the championship. Yep. Well, Lance, it looks like we're about to get underway here. Umpires were a little late today. They got stuck in traffic. Yeah, you know, seems like they're doing construction everywhere. They've been working on this, uh, you know, hard. they've been working on these hard brick roads for it seems like ever, basically. They are, and we all hate it, but then at the end when it's all done and you can ride on that nice smooth road, it seems to, sure you can. Seem to forget it, you know? Sure can. So the first batter to step in for the Thetford Panthers today, Lance, is going to be Ethan Marsha. He is their pitcher. Pitcher leading off, eh? Yes. And as I like to say, Lance, Lyle Rooney is on the slab today. Yes. Big crowd here today for this game. A lot of Huge people. Crowd. And Thetford has traveled well. Sure have. About an uh, hour and 45 or so, up uh, 91. First pitch by Rooney is a strike, and we're underway, folks, here from, as Lance Hall mentioned, the beautiful Dan Hudson baseball field here in Hardwick, Vermont. Dan Hudson was at the one of the last games I was at, Lance. I would not be surprised if he was not here today as well. I would be shocked if he wasn't. Voice crack there, guys. Sorry. 0-2 now to Marsha. Second pitch was a strike as well by Lyle Rooney. Rooney now back on the rubber. He'll wind and deliver. And that's rope down the left field line. Foul. You know, Lance, with that wind blowing in today, I feel like the balls are going to really stick up in the air if it's driven to the outfield or could maybe get, knocked down a little bit. Yeah, it could be held up and knocked down, and it's kind of swirling just a little bit. No vortex joke there, just no. stating a fact. Yeah, right? Uh, I heard Joe Rivard speak to uh, Isaiah Baker, or Jaden Baker before the game, and he said, you know, anything up in the air, it's yours today, kid. There you go. He's got the speed to get there. Sure does. That's a ball by Rooney, a one and two count now to Marcia. Let me tell you, like you just mentioned, Lance, Jaden Baker, a great athlete in his own right. Absolutely. Same with his brother, Isaiah. Of course, when you're in the lineage of Mike Demand Baker. Oh, of course. You're going to be an athlete. Oh, absolutely. That pitch was a ball. Just missed the corner there, Lance. Looked good. I thought it looked good as well. Two and two the counts. And that's in there. Struck him out. Backwards K there for Marsha. He'll be, as the wise Dennis Eckersley would say, a pair of shoes at the plate. You know who Dennis Eckersley is? Lance? I remember Dennis Eckersley well. Great closer. Until he went up against Kirk Gibson. Yep. 1988 Game 1 World Series, A's, Dodgers. What a great game. Well, I don't remember it. I remember it. I watched it live. Who do we have up for the Panthers now, James? Uh, Nolan Pepe. All right. As he'll watch a first pitch ball from Rooney. Nolan Pepe is the second baseman. Rooney winds and fires. That's in there for a strike. Look at that, Lance. It seems like Rooney, had, Rooney normally throws hard, but it seems like he's got a little extra zip on his yeah, fastball today. Yeah, he's zeroed in and uh, adrenaline going right now. Oh, 100%. See if we can set him up and knock him down. Ooh, that looked good too, Lance. Nice curveball there, the old Uncle Charlie. We'll see if the uh, umpires call it consistent today or whether they're all over the place or not. We'll see. Two and one count now to Pepe. Rooney wants and fires. That's sawed off the end of the bat. Revard, oh! As the ball go under his glove, can't quite get his footing. That'll put Pepe on first. You know, that's an uncharacteristic error for uh, Tyler Rivard, a shortstop. It is. Yeah. Rivard, a great athlete, had a, one of the best seasons I've ever seen by a high school basketball player this season. Just fantastic. I mean, he was really something to watch Definitely this year. one of the best seasons ever by a Wildcat. I can tell you that. I mean, Lance, when you average 15-plus rebounds a game on top of probably 20, nearly 20 points, it's impressive. I basically changed his nickname in basketball from T-Rex to Rebound. Yes. Rebound Rebard. Yes. Mac Briglin stands in now. Swing and a miss. Took a big cut at that first pitch fastball by Rooney. Rooney, as, uh, as well, Lance, has very good curveball, very good off-speed and breaking stuff on top of a nice fastball. Just an all-around great pitcher. Sure is.
Rooney now back on the slab. He'll wind and fire. That's in there for a ball. Looked good, just a little low. One ball, one strike now to Briglin. Defense him, looking to turn the double play, James? Uh, yes. Right here, I think that uh, the batter, they're going to try and maybe get one to roll to the left side to Menard or Revar. Nice pickoff oh, move to first base. Oof, that was a close play. Pepe that's, just barely got back up. Yes, that's another nice pickoff move by Wild Rooney. Very quick to turn and fire to first base. Keeping him honest. Now Rooney back from the set. He'll wind and fire. Runner goes, that throw down. Montgomery. Got him. And they got him. Nice play by James Montgomery. What a throw. That one was on a rope out there. Yes, it was. Looking like Johnny Bench behind home plate. Can't ask for a much throw. better throw than that. You really can't. That throw was right I mean, on the money. Pepe almost kind of had a step. and uh, He did. He had a big lead at first base. Took a perfect throw, and that's what we got right oh, there. Oh, yeah. He had, a, he had a great jump, and, you know, Montgomery put everything he had behind it. Great throw, and Davison did a good to get over and cover. That's high for a ball to Brigland. So it's going to be a 2-2 count now. Two outs here in the top of the first. Yes. You know, Lance, Jim is a big Cardinals fan, so I try and put as many Cardinals references in as I can once in a while. Okay. That's rocketed hard foul over towards the Dan Hudson soccer field. Bob Gibson, Lou Brock. Yes. Uh, Joe Morgan played there. No, he was a red. Who was the shortstop that was at the back of Ozzie Smith. Always did the backflip on his way up there. Stand the man. Chopper. Chopper, and that's going to scoop foul. Nice job by Montgomery to get that, uh, get to that one quickly. And a lot of times, too, Lance, you'll see if there's a ball hit kind of almost right on the line down the third baseline, if you see a third baseman coming in, sometimes they'll swipe it foul, which is legal. Actually. It is legal. I did not know that. If you're running down the third baseline to cover a bunt and it's right on the line, sometimes the third baseman will swipe it foul. Uh, I did not know you could do that. I've seen it happen. Three and two now. Nice play by Montgomery to keep that ball in front of him. Sure is. Great defensive catcher. Has a good arm, too, as you saw. <laughs> that he does. So now a full count. Rooney now takes a long look home to Briglin. Rooney now, he's going to kick and deliver. Swing and a miss. Struck it out. So, two strikeouts in the first inning for Lyle Rooney, and he's fired up, stepping off the mound. Well, folks, a great first inning there, or a great top of the inning for the Wildcats. And uh, we'll be right back, folks. Take a moment to read the sponsors here in between innings, I think is the uh, format I'm going to set up. Sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics. And the Hardwick Village Restaurant, 472-5701. Breakfast all day. Uh, we want to thank all our sponsors this year who helped bring Hazen Union Sports to everybody. We could not be us without you. Certainly could not. You know, they sponsor us all throughout the basketball season, all throughout the soccer season. Could not do it without them. We thank you guys very much. And we're back, folks. Getting ready to stand in is the leadoff man, Tyson Davis and Lance, and he's about as good a leadoff hitter as they come. Fantastic athlete from a fantastic athletic family. Uh, Tyson, one of the seniors on the team this year. Yes. Just uh, a great, great person as well. Really good kid. So Ryan Marsh, or Ethan Marsha on the mound for the Thetford Panthers. He'll wind and fire. That's in their first pitch strike. Shatter from the Wildcats bench had deafening proportions today. Very, very much so. And that's one thing, Lance, that's common in uh, baseball, too. Just the chatter from the I, bench. I've heard no one do it with the velocity of our bench, though. That one's going to drop in. Oh. Base hit for Tyson Davison. So he's going to get the Hazen bats going early. Nice hit right out to shallow center. Sure was, and I think, like I said, too, Lance, the wind really, really helping today. Also knocking that one down a little bit, making it harder to play for the center fielder. And now the big bat of Tyler Revard. T-Rex. T-Rex, for sure. Tall, lanky athlete in Revard, who is a four-sport athlete here, Lance. And he smokes, smokes one to right, to right field. That's down for a base hit. 
So back to back base hits. First pitch swing and lands for the Wildcats. Rocking the uh, Thetford pitcher right here. Marsha. But he's showing what? Three pitches? We've got two hits, right? Yes. <laughs> Marsha. He's leaving it in the zone right now, and the Wildcats are hammering it. As James Monk Montgomery, he knows his way around a bat as well. He sure does. Don't feed this kid a fastball. No. That one might be headed for the Judevine Library if you do. Very unusual there, Lance, to see a pickoff move to second base. Yeah, Tyson wasn't really led all that far. No, Tyson was not very far off the base, but he maybe, got back pretty easily. Maybe the pitcher's just trying to kind of buy himself a little time, collect himself. And he is, you know, I think, you know, you gotta do that sometimes on the mound. Montgomery swings and miss. Davison down. Third baseman bobbled. Nice slide there by Davison, too. Whew. Head first, Pete Rose style right in there. Sure was, that was a bang bang play at third base. So the Cats are known for their aggressive base running. We got runners at second, third now. They sure are, the double steal worked out as Davison and uh, Rivard will both move up 90 feet. Count 0-1. And, and Montgomery, a little bit of a, kind of a half swing there by Montgomery. It's, I think he'd like to have that one back. I think he would, it's kinda. That was low. Montgomery looks at the plate as if he's not really seen it the best, but it happens sometimes. Marsha winds and fires. <laughs> that is fouled off the catcher. And they call a balk on the pitcher. So Rooney, or Davison, I'm sorry, is gonna come in and score on the balk on Marsha and Reva will move up 90 feet in third base. I don't quite understand the call. How, what was the balk? How did he balk? The ball, so, was, the ball was down here. Yeah, I. that was kind of a late balk call, I think, Lance. I don't, normally if you make a delivery to the plate, they're not gonna call it a balk, because normally it's only a balk if you step off the mound and right. don't throw, or if you don't make a delivery to the plate. Well, regardless, cats up one zip. Yes. <laughs> a little confusing there. there. There's been a few balks called recently, actually. I've, uh, most box I've ever seen called in a season, Lance. I did see the Thetford coach out to talk to the third base umpire for a moment, but he didn't put up that much of a fight. Montgomery's gonna foul that one back. <sighs> Just missed the Toyota Sienna over there. You know, Lance, when you run out of real estate in the parking lot, you don't have much of an option, but I would I, never park near a baseball field. No, I was lucky. Nice. I found a spot way over on the other side. Oh yeah, somebody hits it over there. I don't think Barry Bonds could foul one off to where I'm at. Probably not, Montgomery's gonna strike out. But only one out for the Cats, as you would rightfully call him, Lance, the butcher, the baker, the home run maker, Jaden Baker standing in. Revard's still on third. For those, folks, uh, for those of you folks that watch basketball here on HCTV and you get to see, Lance, or hear Lance commentate, I should say, he's a man of many nicknames for the Wildcats. Well, Lance Hall has uh, done my best play. over the years. Too. You've had some great ones, really great ones. The Big Red Machine for Big Elliot Kimball was great. Yep. Uh, the Butcher, the Baker, the three-point maker for both Jaden and Isaiah. I think uh, we'll let uh, the pitch come in here. That's roped hard, fouled on the first base line. I think one of my favorites was for uh, Tessa Luther when I came up with the Barefoot Contessa for her. What? Tessa Luther, yeah. the, the barefoot Contessa. That's a good one. Yeah, I like that one. That was, that was probably one of my favorites. Sure is. Marsha back on the rubber now, a 1-1 count to Baker. He's gonna wind the fire. That's right down the middle for a strike. So Baker's gotta protect here, Lance. He's down in the count, one and two. Still just one out. Yes, still uh, plenty, of, plenty of baseball to play, you know? So Marsha now back from the set. He'll deliver. And Baker pokes it off the end of the bat down the right field line and it's down. Sure. Baker turned it on the Jets. He's gonna get into second base standing. Rivard scores, it's a two nothing lead for the Wildcats. Well, that ball was curling. You thought it might just go enough to go foul, but he dropped it right there. He did. And to the credit of the right fielder, he made a heck of a play to keep that ball from rolling down over the bank. He sure did. You know. You know, Lance, one thing uh, I'll bring up is if you're a right-handed hitter and you can fight a ball off to the opposite field and you can hit to the opposite field, or same as if you're a lefty and you can hit to left field, that's such 
an underrated aspect of the game. If you can hit to the opposite field, you're going to get a lot of hits because it's just not often that you see hitters with the ability to hit to the opposite field. Pickoff move, Baker safe. I guess, Lance, we should have called him the butcher, the maker, the RBI maker. There we go. One. So Cats up two zip now, bottom of the first. Yes. Yes. This is Lyle Rooney up at yes. best. And that's hit hard foul down the right field line. You thought of a good nickname for uh, Lyle Rooney, Lance? I've been trying to think of one all season. Give me some time. I was trying to think of something that started with R that was relative to baseball. But. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is Sparky Lyle Rooney. That's a good remember, one. Remember Sparky Lyle? Oh, yeah, Sparky Lyle. That, that came in, you know. There's another one. This Foul is the back cars. to the parking lot. Thankfully, misses the tires. So, 0-2 now to Rooney. Rooney doing a good job to protect there, Lance, and fight that one foul. As good a hitter as he is a pitcher. Struck him out, though. So, Rooney's going to be a pair of shoes at the plate. I love using Dennis Eckersley references. Go for it. He's a great commentator, one of my favorites. This is Jazz Zendik. Sure is, the Craftsbury player for this Wildcat team this year, and he's been a very good outfielder. Great player. Sure is. Davison still at second, two outs, bottom of the first, Cats up two zip. Zendik, big cut and a miss at that one. He was swinging for Calderwood Insurance. He was. Baker at second. Two down, two nothing lead for the Cats. No balls, one strike to Zendik. Marsha now from the set. He'll snap one back to second base. Baker gonna turn on the Jets. Ball by. Pass ball, Baker safe. But it's not gonna get quite far enough away for him to meander on home. Huge crowd here today, to, uh, Lance. Like I said, this is history right here. Uh, first ever semifinal baseball game hosted here at Hudson Fields. Yes. So we're talking uh, 52 years, 51 years. School opened in the fall of 70, 51 years. Oh, yeah. Swing and a miss by Zendik. He got a piece of it, but the catcher caught it. So that'll be a strike. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Two nothing lead for the Cats, bottom of the first. Wind blowing straight in, picking up. Sure is. Struck nice him out. pitch on the corner. So, after a rocky start, Marsha settled in and threw the ball extremely well on the mound. He did. Cats caught a break on that balk call that we still don't quite understand. But They sure did. At, I, you know, at yeah. the end of one, it's Cats 2, Thetford 0. You know, I think it kind of got the momentum going for the Cats, too. Lance. It did. So we'll take a little break and be back at the top of the second inning. We're back, folks, here at the Dan Hudson Baseball Diamond as Thetford is set to stand in here. Rooney, to no surprise, back on the rubber. And standing in for the Thetford Panthers is Ryan Malloy, the big catcher for the Panthers. Rooney winds and fires. Malloy hit that one hard. See, this guy looks like if he gets a bat on a ball, it's gone. Oh, very much so. Kind of uh, Jose Canseco-esque at the plate. Just not on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Just a bigger dude is what I'm getting. Low for a ball. I'll so. go a little more old school than that. I'm thinking Greg Luzinski. Never even heard of him. Never even, yeah. Jim knows who I'm talking about. Big time hitter for the Phillies. They called him the Bull. 1-1 one, one pitch in for a ball. 2-1. and one. Rooney still throwing the ball hard. We were trying to think of a, a couple of nicknames for Lyle Rooney. I came up with a couple. The Flamethrower Lyle Rooney or maybe the Wild Thing Lyle Rooney. 
I don't want to call him that though, because it's a three and one count. We'll call him the Lyle thing. I like that. Let's go with that. The Lyle thing. The Lyle thing. thing. We'll go with that. The Lyle thing. Look at this. Lance on the fly with the nickname. 3 1 in there for a strike. Count runs back to full. Good job by Rooney there. Fight back on the mound. Lance, you a big Blue Jays fan? Rooting for him this year. I picked him as my team this year. I've been kind of following them. They're doing pretty good. Of course, the Yankees are laying waste the entire Eastern Division. They are. The Red Sox are starting to come around, though. Slowly and but surely, we're up over 500 finally. Rooney with the walk. Yes, Rooney with the walk. So we're going to get a courtesy runner now. Number 20, Gavin Chambers. He's Kid going to run for the catcher, Malloy. Kid looks like he's a flyer out there. Sure is. That kid is small. Andrew Menard might be taller than him, Lance. <laughs> So Rooney now, he's got to try and shake off the leadoff walk. Rooney back on the rubber. He'll kick and deliver. That's in there for a strike. Tall, lanky hitter here for the Panthers. It is. A shorter hitter, Lance. That might be a ball. Looked a little low. But right at the knees. You know what they say, Lance. The strike zone's usually knees to nipples. Yeah. <laughs> That's fouled back. Right to the Thetford fans that are sitting right behind home plate in a precarious position down there. Yeah, I was there. gonna say, we got a lot of blue and gray out here. You know, we it's, sure. it's not a bad ride up through from Thetford. Nice ride. Sure is not. But Pretty much all interstate until you hit St. Jay and then you just gotta come over through Danville. Oh yeah. Big crowd though for both teams. Rooney winds and fires. Swing and a miss. So Rooney picks up K number three on the day. His third punch out. As Justin Robinson stands in, the first baseman for the Thetford Panthers. The Panthers, that's a nickname you don't hear a lot in high school baseball. Pickoff move to first is safe. Yeah. Panthers against Wildcats. Yes. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. I guess you consider you could consider them both wild cats. Yes, yes you could. That pitch is in there for a ball by Rooney. One and one. Or maybe one and oh, I'm sorry, that was his first pitch to Robinson because he made a pickoff move. Gould, a very good glove at first base, too. He can make a quick tag. Asia Gould is, yes, excellent first baseman. He was an excellent, excellent defender for the Hazen Wildcat defense this year in basketball. Six man coming off the bench. Also played golf. As well. And uh, I'm trying to think, did he play soccer? I don't think he did this year, according to Mike Demand Baker. And Aisha, of course, a uh, special place in my heart. He's a former Lakeview Laker. Sure is. Played with Cody up at Lakeview. One ball, one strike, one out for the Wildcats. Rooney takes a long look home. He'll kick and fire. Montgomery tried to make a snap throw to first, but nothing going on. Say, so had his arm caught and ready. Sure did. I was going to say, Lance, I don't have my Red Sox hat on today, but we would all be supporting our respective teams. If we did. <laughs> yeah. Rooney winds and fires. Swung on and missed. Nice squeeze by Montgomery behind home plate, and it's 2 2. That's hit right back to Rooney. Whoa! Uncharacteristic. Very uncharacteristic there by Rooney. Made the nice glove at first. Made the nice glove on the comebacker. 
and then air mailed it over Rivard's head. And yeah. Rivard's a pretty tall guy say, that when can you, jump. When you, yeah, when you throw it over Tyler's head, you've thrown it over. Yeah, you, you've thrown it pretty high. I don't think Yao Ming could have caught that one. Right? So runners at first and second now. One out. One out. Top of the but second. But hey, double play is still a possibility with the runner at first. Yes, it is. It's all right. I think Rooney's just going to shake it off and settle back in. Rooney winds and fires. That's rocketed foul. As this is Jacob Gilman that stands in. He is the center fielder for the Thetford Panthers. You see, Lance, I thought their colors were blue and yellow. They got blue and red on their jerseys. Uh, I'm seeing blue and gray, yeah, with the red belts. But Yeah, I'm, I see red trim around their numbers, though. Yeah. Okay, yep. But I thought they were blue and white, really. They are in basketball. Rooney now winds and fires. Ooh, that looked good. I've seen a, uh, that, that same pitch called a strike today. That looked very good. Me, I mean, a ball and two strikes. A hair low. Yeah. But ball and two strikes to Jacob Gilman. You're splitting hairs on that call. Oh, really? That one's outside. Nice block by Montgomery. Two and two. Now to Gilman. And that's in there for strike three. So Rooney picks up strikeout number four on his third backwards K of the day. Confidence maker right there. Yes, it is. Another pair of shoes for Rooney. I'll have a wall full of them here soon. Those of you at home that don't know what a pair of shoes is, it's a looking strikeout. Two. Go ahead. Dennis Eckersley uses it all the time. Go ahead, Lance. Two outs, <laughs> top of the second. Cats up two zip, runners on first and second. First pitch ball by Rooney. Man, that one looked good too, Lance. Just a little low. Yeah. I will say the umpire's calling him fairly consistent. Mitchell Parkman at the plate. Just a bit outside, Rooney tried the corner and missed. As the wise Bob Euchre would say. Euchre, a phenomenal commentator for many, many years for the Milwaukee Brewers. He was a talker. That's outside for a ball, 3-0. They so well, don't want to load the bases here. So Rooney has gone 3-0 to Mitchell Parkman. Euchre was a little before my time, though, Lance. I don't remember him too well. Great, great commentator. Chopper. Chopper, nice. And they got him at first base on a first. bang, bang play. Davison did a good job on the screamer to That play, by the time they got done bobbling that, finally got it over there to first base. You know what you call that, James? What? A cheek squeezer. That was a cheek squeezer of a play. Sure was, Lance. Sure was. Lance, I might have to use that one. That's a good term. So we move that to the middle of the second. The Cats maintain the two-zip lead on that great play there to get the third out. Our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hayes and Athletics and the Hardwick Village Restaurant, 472-5701. Breakfast all day. You're watching Hayes and Wildcat Basketball on HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived at W www.hctv.us. Lance Hall with the uh, color and my good friend James Salvis on the play-by-play. -play. Jim on camera. What do you say, uh, James, we give our vocal cords a rest and come back to the top of the inning? I agree. So we're back, folks. Marsh is still on the mound for the Thetford Panthers and a big swing and a miss by Andrew the Mahler Menard. Oof. Menard, Menard looking to put the heavy lumber on that one. He sure was. He swings a real good bat at the plate. Swings a real good hockey stick for Linden as well. Sure does. I'm sure he hits uh, many slap shots into the net. I would not want to be a goalie trying to defend him. Marshall winds and fires. And that one's fouled back. Ooh. 
off a Jeep Renegade, or off a Jeep Wrangler back there. Yikes. Uh, those Jeeps are tough. They sure are. One ball, two strikes to Andrew the Mahler Menard. Marsha wines and fires. And drop third strike. Easy throw down to first base. Menard comes up a little short there. Dan DeGrosier up next for I'm the... I'm sorry, it's Dan DeGrosier's in right field. No, okay, oh, yeah, this is Dan, right? Yes, yes. Sophomore. I thought it was Wyatt Flanders. I couldn't really, you can't tell from up the lands. Dan DeGrosier. Yes, Dan Sophomore. DeGrosier. Yep, right field there. For the Cats. He played a decent amount last year too, Lance. He did. In the games we call a very good right fielder. Swings a good bat to Groslier, a big name here at Hazen as well, I believe. Yes, indeed. Speaking of one, poke shot to right field. You know, Lance, I think uh, Thetford had, had enough of the blue base hits, so they kind of tried to position their outfielders in a little bit with this wind kind of knocking the ball down on the little chop shot there by. With the vortex in full effect today. Yeah. That is the smart move. Sure is. You have to be prepared at all times. Asia Gould. He's one of those, uh, as my gym teacher would say, Lance, one of those weird lefties who throws left and bats right. Marsha back on the rubber, he'll wind and deliver. Great eye at the plate by Asia Gould. He's seeing 2020 right now. Marsha winds and fires. Swing and a miss by Gould. Shaking his head, he don't think he wanted to swing at that one. That was a little high. I think he wants that one back. Marsha now back on the rubber. No kick and deliver. And Gould swings and misses. It looks like these Wildcats are taking some kind of shorter swings at these lines. Not getting the full extension on the bat. Anxious to get the hit. Sure are. But got to be patient as well because it's two and two. Outside, great eye by Gould. Count runs full. Marsha now back on the slab. He'll wind and deliver. That's low for a ball by Gould, so he'll take the walk down to first base. And coming up is Tyson Davison, the leadoff man for the Wildcats. Had a base knock in his first at bat. Nice uh, hit to get the game rolling. Was very nice, hard hit single. Couple of steals and then came in. I believe it was uh, Tyson who came in on the block. Yep, oh. and then Revard scored. Via Jaden Baker. Pickoff throw to first base. Gould back. The entire Hazen basketball coaching staff in attendance today, too, Lance. We got right. Travis Hill, Aaron Hill, Mike Baker, and Adam Gann. I gotta say, this is big time. Sure is. Marsha winds and fires. That's low for a ball. Speaking of. Speaking of legendary coaches, you know, Aaron Hill and Mike Baker are the two you should put on that list. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Mike Dumman Baker. Yes. Got to throw out a thank you while I can to Mike Dumman Baker, who uh, commentated, kind of got thrown into commentating here for baseball this season and did extremely well. Yes, I got to thank Mike, too. He's done a great job for us. Great conversations with Mike here. Sure is. You know, one thing I didn't know about him, Lance, is he's a People's Academy alum as well. You did not know that? No, I did not know that I Mike Baker was a fellow People's Academy I alum. I didn't know that. Try not to say that too loud around here. I may get shot. <laughs> not literally. It's a joke, folks. Marsha winds and fires. Gold takes off. He'll slide in safely at second. Good thing the balls are white because you wouldn't be able to see him that well with yeah. all the dust. A lot of dust out there. Should probably take back that last one. Mike call. Baker, of course, sat here with me for a while. I can't remember which team we were playing, and I, I still haven't quite figured out how this happened, but somehow my phone dialed 911. Yes, Mike told me about this. Yeah. 
<laughs> and one of the caves he commentated. I had to explain it. I was just simply watching a baseball game. Right? Two balls and a strike now to Davison. The operator was very courteous and managed to chuckle as well about it. Yeah, I was going to say that. I'm sure Lance was not too enthused. Completely unintentional. I still don't know how it happened. <laughs> Marsha, no wind and fire. That's inside for a ball. Good eye by Davison as he ducks out of the way there, does the old limbo. Or the Matrix move, I should say. Marsha now from the set. Davis a little bit of a lead there at second. Pickoff goes through. Davis is going to take off. We're going to have a throw now. Uh, Gould started to run. Or Gould, that's Gould actually. Yeah, Aisha, I'm thinking of Davis is at the plate. Yes, happens to us all. Uh, I think that was a wise move. I don't think Aisha I quite agree. had enough jump to get down there to third. I mean, Aisha's fast, don't get me wrong, but I think he might have been hosed at yeah, third base. I don't think the ball uh, went back quite as far as they thought they was going to. Great idea there to get back. Patience, especially with two outs. Now Davison will step back in the box. Back on the set is Marsha. He'll wind and fire. Swing and a miss by Davison, and it's a full count. Three and two. We've seen a lot of full counts today, too, Lance. Yes, we have. Getting our money's worth today. Oh, sure are. They should have charged admission today. They would have made a lot of money. And Davison waves at that one and misses. So, another good inning for Marsha and the Thetford defense. That'll take us to the end of the second. The Cats still up to zip here in the Division Three semifinal game. Once again, winner goes to Centennial Field on Saturday to face the winner of the uh, Bellows Falls Union Terriers versus People's Academy Wolves game, which is going on right now. James, are you being a Wolves fan? Do you have any updates on that? Anybody texting you? With uh, not scores yet, Lance. I gotta, I gotta take a peek at that because I know that's going to be a real barn burner of a matchup down there, right. as it's the two and three seeds and. You know, Lance, there's nothing I would love more to see than a classic PA Hazen rivalry matchup for a championship. Number one versus number two. Can't that has not happened, I think, my entire life for any sport. So it was more of an 80s thing in 70s and, you know, most every generation before I was alive. Or decade, I should say, before I was alive. <laughs> Lance, what do you say we uh, give our old vocal cords a rest? I'm ready, yep. Be back, in the Be back in the top of the, uh, the third. Top of third yeah. We're back, folks, here in the top of the third inning. I'm Jim Salvis. Along with me is legendary Lance Hall, Paul McCall, and Jim on camera today. Always got to say that when we mention your name, Lance. Legendary. I don't know if I've quite achieved that status. I don't know if I'll ever achieve that status, James. But. Lance, you know, somehow it sounds good with you saying it, though, so I'll take it. You know, Lance, I think in this community, you know, you've commentated at HJTV for a long, long time. Fell back behind us. Yeah, I'll be uh, starting my seventh year this fall. This winter, actually. I started with, uh, with basketball in the uh, winter of 2015, then we started covering soccer in the fall of 2016, and that was uh, a, been here ever since. That was a great season to start. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, we won the championship that year. Yes. In uh, basketball. One and one count now to, I was just about to say it, Lance, I was looking at it, to Dempsey McGovern. McGovern. That's a baseball name right there. Dempsey. Yeah. Dempsey McGovern. That is. That is like a, uh, you might recognize this player, uh, Lance, back in the 80s, Dickie Thong. Uh -huh. That's a baseball name. I was thinking there was another player. I think I want to say he was a catcher, Rick Dempsey. Yes, yep, he was. He caught uh, for a long, long time. He was a very good catcher. And another pair of shoes for Lyle Rooney. Geez, he could nail him to the wall now, Lance. That's five. And I got to tell you, I've got to toss out a a heartfelt, grateful thank you to John Sperry, who's. Uh, Retiring 
yes. here in a little bit. At least retiring uh, from... Uh, from athletic, athletic director at, at, at Hazen Union. He's been here for a long time. And he was the one who saw me do the lineups down at the Hardwick Elementary 6th grade tournament back in February, March of 2015. Asked me to come up and do starting lineups for basketball that winter. Um, and that led to you know, HCTV. Him, uh, Tim Whitney recommended it, me to HCTV. Yep. But uh, John was the one who, who sort of got the ball rolling, so to speak, yeah. on all of this. So I, I, I really got to thank John for giving me that opportunity. Stung on the ground, David, play by Tyson Davison. Nice play by Golly. Tyson. Way Quick to feet, great glove. Way to flash some leather there at second base. That got the crowd rolling. Oof. So, uh, you know, and, and the biggest thing is, you know, I sat down there beside John at, you know, some soccer games, of course, all the basketball games. The man is just a dynamo. I mean, sure he, is. He's sitting there, it's like, you know, John, uh, the hot dog machine's not working in the snack shack. John, can you tape my ankle? John, the officials are here. John, we need a mop. I, you know, he, he was yeoman's work every game, multitasking all over the place. Very much. I got to know him well. I, I had a great appreciation for his work. Yes. And the biggest thing through all that is I made a very, very good friend. Yes. And, and that is what matters the most. 1-1 one, uh, one count to, to Pepe. And, yes, we got to thank John Sperry very much for all he's done. Many, many years of service here as athletic director and just everything. For Hayes and Wildcat Athletics. You know, I, I, I'll give him a thank you too, Lance, because he welcomed me in with open arms when I became a member of HCTV. And like I said, you know, a lot of times the People's Academy Wolf is not uh, too welcome in these parts. <laughs> No, John had a way of just making you feel at home. Sure did. Two and one now to Pepe. Rooney kicks and delivers. Pepe shoots that one to left field. That'll be a one hopper. Zendik will scoop it up. So I think. We're gonna hold Pepe at first. I believe that's only the second hit for the Stepford Panther team. Today. Two outs. Top Two. of the third. Two nothing Wildcats. And yeah, Lance, like you brought up to start the game, you don't see their uh, pitchers hitting the leadoff spot too often. Yeah, I, I thought that was a little uh, unorthodox, but. As Mac Briglin stands in now, number one. Shortstop. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch by Rooney. One strike, 0 oh 1. Rooney back on the slab, snap throw to first base. No tag by Gould, but nice, uh, nice throw. Nice move. Very nice move. Quick. If you're a pitcher, you gotta have a quick pick off. Rooney now back on the rubber. He'll deliver. That's stung and rebarred. He's gonna lay out, and he'll say, "Too shady, you, Tyson Davison. I'll make a flashy play myself." Couple of fantastic plays there in the infield to save some runs. You know Those balls go through, and uh, you know you got extra bases. There. You know what they call that, there, Lance? That's part of the diamond in the diamond. There uh, you go. Which is uh, a term they use for your four best defensive players in the field, which normally are your catcher, your shortstop, your second baseman, and your center fielder. That's your diamond in the diamond. And it's shown brightly for the Hayes Union Wildcats right there. Sure has. As we move to the bottom of the third, Cats still up two zip. Our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hayes and Athletics and the Hardwick Village Restaurant, 472-5701. Breakfast all day. Uh, for breakfast, I like the French toast, some sausage, some scrambled eggs. Uh, oh, Lance, don't get us going juice. on food again. I'll have, it. I'll have that. Lance, I remember we talked about pizza from Smith's Grocery for about 20 minutes last yeah. year at a baseball game. Yeah, then we went on and, and uh, sort of gave a rundown of all the great pizza places all around. Sure did, pretty much. Not going to do that today because I am a little hungry, and that's only going to make me hungry. So I think we're just going to pull the headsets off and uh, wait for the next hitter to come up with the cats. I agree. So we're back, folks. Oops, sorry there, folks. Had the mic in my mouth, basically. T-Rex. Yes. On the mound. Did you uh, did you come up with that last just with him being tall? Yeah, just you know, just you know, I like it. Huge, you know, like a, like a T Rex. I like it. 
Outside for a ball. But a great kid, hard working, humble. It sure is, great golfer too. Yep. And his performance in the championship game against Winooski was MVP-ish. It was. Marsha winds and fires, that's fouled back by Revar. You see how far that ball will twist foul. Man, if Revar can straighten that one out. But yeah, you know, you know Lance, it's just crazy, crazy athlete. Reed, great soccer player as well. Actually, yeah. Uh, Excellent goalie. That one's, is that one going to stay foul? No, nope, that's fucking no. foul. Fucking foul. Yeah, uh, great goalie on the soccer team. Sure is. Center for uh, basketball. And I, of course, you know how I love play basketball inside, under the basket. Oh, yeah. You know? You love the real inside out, the yeah. inside The real player. inside game, and that's what Tyler played. Yeah, very much. Excellent finisher around the basket, too. So two and two now to Rivard. Marsha's gonna wind and deliver. And Rivard does a good job to protect and flick it foul. Though, the third Chases game. that one down low. Sure does. You know, Lance, as you would have told him, I believe I saw fabulous Freddie Larson in attendance. Really? Oh, yeah. I saw his dad. I have not seen fabulous Freddie. I'm pretty sure I saw Fred walk, uh, walk by with him. Freddie the hip, Larson. Little poke shot off the end of the bat there by Rebar. Freddie had a Freddie had a way on the soccer team of just when he was defending, just throwing a hip. That was just a work of art. Sure was. Yeah, Freddie the hip. Larson. Or fabulous Freddie in basketball. Fabulous, Fre Fa fabulous Freddie in basketball. Yes. Oh, that one, wild pitch there by Marsha. Just a bit high. Three balls and two strikes. No, Lance, one thing I gotta incorporate, I gotta start saying at the start of Wildcats games, it's time for Wildcat Baseball. There you go. All of uh, Vince Gilly. <laughs> yes. You wanna talk about a great commentator. The Dean. Ooh, inside. They say that caught the corner, Regard was backing out of the way. That's gonna be a strike. I don't think T-Rex is too content with that call. No, I... Well, the umpire's down there and I'm up here, so... James Montgomery to stand in now for the Wildcats. Also the big power back, as you said. It's 525. Yeah, he James, has, uh, great hitter. He great has, hitter. as they would say, Lance in uh, baseball, white tower power. Well, that went skied. That might be light tower, but not really the way they wanted it to. Shortstop puts it away, though. Two so, outs. Man, three, three dangerous hitters in a row in this Wildcat lineup. Jaden Baker, the butcher, the baker. Let's see if he can be the, the on base maker. maker, the hit maker. The hit maker, the home run maker, the on base maker. RBI maker. You can say it for really anything. But... Marsha winds and fires. First pitch, you know, don't blame Jaden for taking there. A lot of times you want to see one, see what he's got. All the great hitters always take the first pitch. Most of the time, yes. That's outside for a ball. That one looked good, too. One ball, one strike. Two outs. Bottom of the third. Outside, two balls and a strike. You know, uh, Lance, as the Hazen Wildcat dugout calls him, Jay Bird. Jaden Baker. The Hazen dugouts. Some of the best I've seen. Yes. Hi for a ball, three and one. Somebody needs to just record those guys, you know. They sure do. I, you know what I'd love to see, Lance? If they could find a way in technology to like mic up players in high school basketball in Vermont, that would be awesome, or any sport. That would be kind of difficult. Though. Just like to have a boom mic down there on that bench. Right? Maybe get a couple shotgun mics going, coming from each side of the dugout. So, a full count now with two down to Jaden Baker. Marsha 
he'll wind and deliver. That's fouled back to the fence. Good job to protect there by Jaden Baker. Baker as good of a cleanup hitter as they come. Lance. Got a lot of big hits. Sure has. Hit a home run this year, actually, I think. Or no, Rivard hit one at Danville. That's high for a ball get eye by Baker. So he'll take the walk. Speaking of Danville, Lance, you want to talk about a big field. Danville's baseball field is huge. I remember playing there in high school, and it's about 480 feet out there to dead center. Not kidding. Thanks, man. You know, uh, you know, a solid 480 out there to center, Lance, in, in Danville. It kind of uh, almost, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it almost kind of reminds me of Wrigley Field a little bit. I'm trying to think. I don't know if I've ever, I've been to the soccer fields out there. I don't think I've ever been to the gym, of course, obviously. I don't think I've ever been to the baseball field. Their the baseball field, Lance, has hedges all the way around it. That is their huh. fence. It's hedges. Huh. All the way around the field, and it's 480 to dead center. Wow. Nobody in Vermont high school baseball sent the ball that far, I would have to think. First pitch to Rooney is high for a ball. Nice eye there by Lyle Rooney. Another Hazen alum in attendance today, Lance, Derek Richardson. Great athlete for the Cats. Very great athlete. Played soccer at Linden, actually, Lance. He's a great soccer player there, too. Where you are going to school right now? Yes. Good athlete. A lot of my friends that I have there now tell me stories about him on the soccer team, and I said, "Trust me, I know." He went to my rival high school. I know. <laughs> Baker on the move. He dives in. He's safe. You know, Jim will like this reference, Lance. I say, why Rooney has a very good uh, number in terms of baseball. He has uh, the same number as Stan the Man Musial, number six for the St. Louis Cardinals. His face and number is out in uh, left field, which is one thing that the Cardinals do that's kind of unique. They have the faces of the players and stuff all throughout, all on the wall at Bush Stadium. Long storied history out there for baseball in St. Louis. Sure is. There's a strike. One ball, two strikes, not a Rooney. I believe the St. Louis Cardinals are 10 time world champions. 11. 11. Jim corrected me last time, too, and I didn't get it right. 11 time world champion, St. Louis Cardinals. There you go, Two and two. Lance followed by the Red Sox, who are nine time world champs. How many have the uh, Yankees won? 27. 27. Oh, poke shot off the end of the bat by Rooney. Dive by the third baseman, and he'll have to gobble that one up, Lance. I think that's going to go down as a base knock for Rooney. Nice hits. Sure was. Beautiful hit to put runners at the corners. For Zendek. A little two-out rally going here for the Cats. Yes, Jas Zendek stands in. Nice RBI opportunity for him. For you folks that don't know what RBI means, it stands for run batted in. And Fenton Myers goes in to run for... Lyle Rooney. I think, you know, trying the to Lyle just keep. The Lyle thing. Yes, the Lyle thing. Just trying to keep Lyle fresh, or as fresh as possible to stay right. on the mound. Fenton Meyer very fast. Sophomore. Yep. Fenton Meyer, the speedster. Fenton, the flash. Meyer. There we go. See, I'm getting good at this line. You are, see? Stay with you. So Marsha now from the set. He'll turn and throw. Whew. Tricky, tricky move there, Lance. That was almost another block. I was going to say. Yeah. I saw him step that, that, to third and not throw, and I was like, well, he's got to throw the ball here. And that's a block. Can't step off and not throw. No count on Zendik yet. Nope, no pitch has been thrown to him. Here it comes. And Zendik shoots one towards left field. Left fielder coming on. And that'll drop foul. Foul. Just foul. Another couple of feet inside. And I don't think the left fielder was going to get there. I don't think so. Man, if Zendik could have straightened that one out a little bit, Lance. Whew. 
That one might have got out of here. That one might have been headed for the hill over here, Lance. It straightened it out. But he hit it up into the wind, which has ceased a little bit. Yeah, has sort of come just a little bit here. So now one ball, uh, no balls and a strike to Zendik. They got him in a pickle. They go to third base. He's safe. And Myra will move up to second base. What a trick play by the Hazen yeah. Wildcats. Oh, my gosh, Lance. Got the infield confused. That's the Spencer Howard special right there. Cats, the Cats are known for aggressive base running and plays like that. So the two-out rally continues. What a trick play. You know, Lance, I'm surprised the Thetford defense didn't try and get uh, Meyer in a pickle over there at first base. But instead, they snapped back to third to get Baker and leaving Meyer all the time in the world to move up to second. And Zendik, he will hit that one hard, too. That one's going to twist out of play. He's, he's making great contact at the plate right now, and he's hit two balls very hard. Just hit him straight up. If he can hit that on the line, Lance, that's probably a gap shot. So two strikes, two outs, two zip is your score, two runners on. Twos all around, Lance. Twos all around. Taking a break here for a moment. Shortstop's got to tie his shoe. Yep. Got to lace up the spikes. You know, Lance, uh, I always liked metal cleats, but not a lot of people. Some people wear metal in baseball, some wear rubber. I prefer metal, personally. Yeah, it hurts a little bit more if you get hit, but digs in a little better in the ground. I, say, I would probably go with metal. <laughs> Struck him out, big time pitch. Sure was, by Marsha, he gets out of the jam. <coughs> the Cats have done everything they could to try and score on that. Sure have. The Wildcats uh, are gonna leave two on base. Here at the end of the third with a two-zip lead, we'll be back top of the fourth. <coughs> so we're back, folks. Ryan Malloy to stand in now for the Thetford Panthers. As always, Lance Hall, legendary Lance Hall on the call. Jim on camera, myself, James Salvis. The gym master, James Salvis. Yes, a couple gyms up here today, actually. Think about it. Jim's a nickname for That's James, right. I suppose. Jim on camera. James on play by play. I'm not a. Uh, you are Jim Master J. Jim Master J. The Jim Master of the broadcast journalism. Jim Master J. Salvis. Yes. That is your new nickname. No, I'm not. I'll take it. Lance Hall, the legend, the icon, the showstopper, <laughs> the nature boy. <laughs> Nature Boy Lance Hall, I like uh, it. That's in there for a strike. Good pitch by Rooney. One ball, uh, one ball, two strikes now. Hall 316. <laughs> oh, let's not go there. Oh, wow. No, let's not do that. Ooh, Lance, I thought he offered it that pitch. Ball gets by Montgomery. I guess he pulls it back, so it'll be two and two to Malloy. The big catcher for the Thetford Panthers. Like you said, Lance, it looks like if this kid barrels it up, it's going. Size the arms on him, you know? Oh, yeah. He's, He's definitely got that power swing. Certainly does. He has the, you know, classic bill. He, he definitely has the build of a catcher. I think if you could guess what position he played without knowing him, yeah. you'd probably say he was a catcher. I'd say fullback. Yeah, right? Tight end. Tight end. Yeah, he'd make a great tight end. Sure would. Nice block by Montgomery, so full count now. For those of you that don't know about Lance Hall, armchair quarterback. One half of the armchair quarterbacks with him and Roland LaJoy. Many years we did that. I had a lot of fun with Roland down there on WLVB. Do you guys still do that, Lance? No, we stopped a number of years ago. Uh, we did it 19 years. Malloy draws the walk. And then uh, just sort of uh, 
decided it was time to hang, hang up, up our. Hey, 19 years, Lance. That's a good run. Courtesy runner, of course, goes in for Malloy. Yep, it's uh, the same one, Gavin Chambers. We wanted to go out on top. I, I, you know, you certainly were, Lance. You guys certainly were. A lot of fun. As good as it came to football podcasty things. Rooney now, he'll wind and fire. Swing and a miss by... Big swing. By Boone Fahey. He's the third baseman. That's a, that's a baseball name, too. Boone Fahey. So that's a good baseball name. It is. Boone. Aaron Boone. I have nightmares about that guy. <laughs> you probably remember Lance, our 3 ALCS. I remember it well. Walk vividly. Off, grand Slam. It was a great play. Wakefield hung it. One strike now to Fahey. Rooney winds and fires. That's low for a ball, one and one. Top of the fourth, Cats still uh, holding on to that two zip lead. You know, Lance, some people have their mixed reviews about him. I personally don't like Aaron Boone as a manager, not just because he manages the Yankees. I just don't think he's a good manager. Can't deny their success this year. Certainly can't. But we'll see what happens when October rolls around. Yeah, that's when the true test begins. Yep, one ball, two strikes. It's top of the fourth. Rooney now back on the slab. He'll kick and deliver. Fahey will watch it high, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, no outs. That's foul back almost right next to us. Right? Yeah, you can almost grab that one yourself, James. Almost. I probably wouldn't, though. Yeah. Kind of like my hand. I would. Work. Yeah. That's why I never played baseball. I'll admit, I was scared of the ball. <laughs> Terrified. Well, you know, I got hit with Terrified it. of the ball. Got hit with it a good few times. You get used to it. Strike three. Lyle Rooney picks up the pair of shoes on Fahey. Rooney will pick up punch out number six on the day, Lance. I like that turn. That's a good baseball turn. Punch it. Great turn. I don't know where it originated. So one out now for the Cats. Yes, as Justin Robinson stands in, the third baseman, or first baseman, I'm sorry. Be nice to see us turn to double play and get right out of this. Sure area. would. It would be nice to see Davison and Rivard twist it. Montgomery calls time. I'm going to go out and chat with Ly Ly the Lyle thing. The Lyle thing, Lyle Rooney. Now, now Gould, Davis, and Rebard and Menard are going to join. Well, uh, great meeting on the mound out there. Old conference. I think just trying to keep Lyle sharp, you know. You know, it's always it's always a good thing to see Lance as a catcher once in a while. You got to just you know call time, go out, and make sure your pitcher is all right. Yeah. Just keep him composed. So Robinson at the plate. You know, they might have been talking about the game. James might have got out and said, hey, what are we going to have on our pizza when we get out of here? Yeah, you know? right? You know? Who knows? The catcher-pitcher conversation keep loose. is a wild thing. You know? You never know. Good pitch there by Rooney. Just a hair inside. 2-0 now to Robinson. Yeah, Lance, I remember when I was in high school, the conversations with the catcher on the mound varied between a lot of different things. Or with the catcher and pitcher. That's smoked back towards us too, Lance. So, Robinson doing a good job to squander that one, foul it away. Spoil that one, I'm sorry. Squander is not the right term, spoil it. Fenton, Fenton Myers on his horse looking for that loose ball. Sure is. Two balls, one strike, one out. That's not a problem in basketball, right? No. Robinson calls time at the plate. He got it. Rooney winds and fires. And that got him. So Rooney's going to plunk him. Put runners at first and second. 
Rudy's. Yeah, Rooney is going to plunk him. That Thetford fans coming alive here a little bit. Sure are. Thetford has runners at first and second with only one out. That's where we hope to turn the double play once again. It is, but I think, Lance, this is when Rooney's at his best. When he's got to face some pressure is when he really throws the ball well. That's that low. low. One and oh now. Two. Jacob Gilman, the center fielder for the Thetford Panthers. Rooney winds and fires. Ooh, Gilman. Poke shot. Gould can't quite get there to that one. Gould almost made a whale of a play over there at first base. As Lance Hall would say, whale of a play. So Rooney's going to step back on the mound here. One ball, one strike, one out. Top of the fourth. Gilman at the plate. Wearing uh, is the same as most of his Thetford teammates, those high stirrup socks. Scores up the punt. Back, going to go to third. Rooney's going to go to the third and get him. The force out at third base. Nice play. Nice, I mean, nice all around play. The bunt was placed great, but uh, Rooney made a fantastic play he did. to get the run around. That kid running was fast. Like, he didn't get him by much. Yeah. You know, I, th I think a lot of times, Lance, you're going to see the pitcher just gobble that up and go to first. Most of the time, you're not going to try and make the play at third because then if you don't get him at third, then you got the bases loaded. Great heads if you up. get him at first, you at least get the lead runner. But a nice play by Rooney nonetheless. Heads up. Rooney kicks and delivers. Swing and a miss. Two outs now for the Cats. As Mitchell Parkman stands in, the left fielder, for the Stepford Panther team. That's in there for a strike. Quickly 0-2 to Parkman. Caught Parkman. Right on the helmet. You see, folks, that is why we wear helmets. And that will load the bases. That one hopefully didn't affect him too bad. It seemed like a curveball there by. Yeah, I thought so. it was sort of an off speed, and you know, he kind of got ducked down there a little bit. Yep. Kind of trotted head. right up to first. You know, Lance, one of my favorite terms to use in baseball now. The bases are drunk with the Thetford Panthers. It's an Eckersley term. Rooney has his work cut out for him now. He sure does. Bases juiced. Bases loaded. Two outs. First pitch ball to Dempsey McGovern. The most baseball sounding name we've heard today. And Boone Fahey. They're both good. Dempsey McGovern, though. He cuts and misses. Man, Rooney needed that one. One ball, one strike. Two outs. Top of the fourth. Rooney back on the slab. He'll kick and deliver. That's fouled back to the fence. Man, I don't know what that fence ever did to Dempsey. But he hit that fence hard. One and two. Let's not forget, uh, Lyle had two strikes on that last batter, Parkman there. He did and walked him. Or he didn't walk him, plunked him. Plunked him, so. And Struck swing him out. and a miss. Big time clutch pitch by Lyle Rooney it right is. there. You know, Lance, that's what I was telling you. When Rooney's got his back against the wall is when he really throws the ball well. Base is loaded, and they leave him there. Sure did. The middle of the fourth. Our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and the Hardick Village Restaurant, 472-5701. Breakfast all day. You're watching Hazen Union Wildcat Baseball right here. On HCTV channel 1080 on your dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Jim Master J, Jim Salvas, the play-by-play. -play. Jim on camera. Legendary Lance Hall, my color man. And we'll take a break and be back here at the bottom of the fourth. Here we go, folks. We're back here at the Dan Hudson Baseball Diamond here in Hardwick, Vermont. 
Marsha is going to remain on the bump for the Fetford Panthers. The Mauler at the plate for the Cats. Nobody better to start an inning. Marsha kicks and fires. That's low for a ball. Great eye there by Andrew Menard. I'm trying to think too, Lance. I believe Menard plays golf as well. Yeah, he does. He plays golf, hockey, and baseball. Two and zero now. Yes, that's what Mike Demand Baker was telling me. Andrew, one of the ones on the golf team. And that is smoked up the middle. Nice hit there by Andrew Menard. And just what I told you, Lance, nobody better you want to start off the inning than the Mahler. Slap shot right up the middle by Andrew the Mahler Menard. It sure is, you know. Uses his hockey skills to good use there. If he makes contact with that thing, it is moving off the bat. Dan DeGrosley are up next for the Cats. I think the center fielder picked that one up and that ball was smoking, Lance. I believe it was. Stitches might have came out. That off ball top. went to him well done. Sure did. Left the bat rare and went to him well done. So he'll step off. So Dan DeGrosley are in here. I always say his last name. Feel bad. Because my mom tells me every time. Really a sweat. A beautiful bunt down. Great bunt there. Nice sacrifice bunt to move up Menard 90 feet, second base. Brings up Aisha Gould. Aisha Gould, the one bagger for this Hayes and Wildcats team. As they say in baseball, you know, or a second baseman, we call him a two bagger. Right. And a third baseman, a third bagger. Or a three bagger, I should say. Marsh uh, fires a ball in there. You saw Lance, he was taking multiple looks back at second base. Watch him with Eric. Because that's one thing too, Lance, if you come to the set, you can only move your head. They know the Cats with their aggressive base running. They sure do. Marsha kicks and fires. That's low for a ball. 2-0 and out of Gould. Although I don't think Andrew's really known for his speed out there. So. No, he is not. <laughs> That's not a knock. It's just no, it's here. not. He's just not one of the more speedier guys in the lineup. I don't think Bernard is slow. But, but. Nah, but you never know. You know, he's one of them could sneak in there. You know? Yeah. Look, there he goes. He's going to dive back. back into second base safe. Showed a little speed right there. He sure did. Maybe we spoke too soon, Lance. Yeah. yeah, you know what? Andrew Bernard's got great speed out there. You know? You know, Lance, even David Ortiz stole the bag once in a while. That happened next to never, but... Albert Pujols even has a couple steals this year, Lance. And he might be the slowest guy I've ever seen. No offense, to Jim and his, no offense to Jim and his St. Louis Cardinals, but no. Albert Pujols might be one of the slowest runners I've ever seen. I love Albert Pujols, one of the greatest hitters I've seen in my entire life. I got to witness him hit a home run at Fenway Park when he was on the Angels. Three ever count, three and oh to Gould. Inside for a strike. Yep. You know, 3-0 Lance, you're taken, regardless, most likely. Like, that pitch has to be so yeah. beautiful for you to swing 3-0. So, 3-1 now. Runner at second, one out. Marsha, snap throw back to second. Menard dives in safe. Man, that jersey's going to have to go through the wash a few times. You know, Lance, that was always my favorite part of baseball, diving. Getting, Getting dirty. dirty. Getting dirty. Love it. I like these new Wildcat jerseys this year. Right. They're looking good. Marsha lines and fires. Ooh. Gould chases that one. That pitch was down low, wasn't it? It was. That would have been a striker. 
Looked a little low to me, Lance, but close. The umpire's been calling them low, so they have, hard they to have. say. It is hard to say. Either way, it's a full count right now with one out. With Menard at second base. Gould at the plate. Swing, better, better, and a miss. Gould's gonna go down swinging for the second time in a row. Two outs, and that'll bring up Tyson Davison. KD, Tyson Davison. Slicing Tyson Davison. Like that. It's, it just comes natural to you, Lance. The nicknames, it's great. Slicing Tyson, I like that. So Marsha now back on the rubber. He'll kick and fire. And Davison, speaking of hitting Slicing. hard. Nice throw, nice pick by the nice first scoop. baseman. Yep. Very good scoop over there. So Hazen remains clinging to that 2-0 lead. They've been doing everything they can to try and get some insurance, but some good pitching by Marsha on the mound. Great pitching. So we'll move to the uh, top of the fifth here in just a moment. Top of the fifth here at Hudson Fields, Hazen Union High School in Hargamont. You're a Hazen Union Wildcats. Up two zip on the Thetford Panthers in the first ever semifinal game played here at Hazen on this very baseball diamond. Cats looking to capture championship gold. First time in 40 years this year if they can do it. Winner of this game will go on to Centennial Field on Saturday to play the winner of the Bellows Falls Union Terriers People's Academy Wolves game, which is going on right now. We'll see if my broadcast partner, Jam Master J, James Salvis, has any updates on that game. Good baseball here today. Both teams have threatened to put multiple runs on the board at times since the Cats jumped out two zip. But pitchers have been pitching themselves out of jams. Field has been making great plays. Count three and one right now. Once again, Hazen's last baseball championship, 1982. I believe that's the only baseball championship here for the Wildcats, 1982. Sorry about that, folks. I'm back. Jam Master J, James Salvis, back on the mic. I just got an update, Lance. From down at Bellows Falls. All right, I just mentioned that game. Your timing is impeccable as always, James. Six nothing, peoples. All right. Well, well, we have number one versus number two. Number one, number three. Pe I thought peoples was three. It was two. No, they're three because they're, they're at Bellows Falls. Okay, oh, that's true. That's true. Yes. yes. But six nothing, PA, as of right. moments ago. What a matchup that would be for a championship game. Oh, Talk sure. about a rivalry. Can't see this guy's number at the plate, so I'll tell you in just a minute, folks. I believe it's number two. It is Nolan Pepe. As Ethan Marcia, the pitcher, is on first after drawing a walk, but Nolan Pepe stands in now. The second baseman. He has a, he has a typical second baseman build. Him and Tyson Davison. Very similar. Ooh, nice move. Pitch on the way, nice pitch on the corner. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. I believe, was Marsha the leadoff hitter, Lance? Yes. All right. Didn't miss much. No, I drew the walk, and uh, then you were here, and that was about it. That's fouled back to the fence. No, Lance, thank God that fence is here. Yes. He's as terrified as I am of the ball. Yeah. I would, I would want to be wrapped in plexiglass or something. Oh, have to be. One ball, two strikes. And a wave and a miss. Rooney, strikeout number seven. Look at, look at Jim's chair here, Lance. That is neat. Jim comes prepared. Sure does. The pillow on the stool. I like, like to see it. Like I say, I 
got old this year and just to stand here for the length of time it takes to do a baseball game anymore. Just Lance, I don't think either of you guys are old. So. A little, little hard on the knees. Oh, nice move to first base. Wow. Ooh. Man, Lance, I wish we had a booth review on that one. I think yeah. he got him. That was a Close. wicked quick move by Rooney to first base. Umpire right there on top of the play. Sure was. Mac Briglin stands in. Swing and a miss. Looks like Montgomery keeps wanting to take snap throws to first base, but never whips one down there. It's like, why not, James? Let one fly. We saw him get one runner out earlier in the game on a beautiful throw down to second. Yep. On a rope right down there. Sure did. That might have been, that was back in the first inning, I think. Foul ball. That one got the butt of his bat. I know it sounds like it hits him, but it got the butt of his bat there. That's an unfortunate way to be down 0-2. Yeah. <laughs> Having to hit the bottom of your bat and go foul. One out. That's fought off foul over behind first base. So it's still 0-2 to Briglin. Rooney, another snap throw to first base. Nice pick by Gould there to prevent the ball from uh, getting by. I want to see Asia try the old hidden ball trick. I saw it earlier That'd be in awesome. the season, Lance. I'd love that. You see it very occasionally, Lance. Go ask him a we used to do that at uh, People's occasionally, Lance, and the old hidden ball trick at first base. Oh, uh, you know how those wolves are. They're sneaky, James. Sure are. One, two. Clearly swinging the bats well down in Bellows Falls today. Up six zip, yeah. Swing and a miss. Rooney. Two outs. Back to back punch outs, number eight. I'm trying to think of a uh, St. Louis Cardinal that was number eight, but I can't put my finger on it. Right now. I am not that familiar with numbers of players. Numbers of players. David Eckstein, maybe? No, he was two, I think. Yeah. Next time might have been five. Though. <laughs> There's that snap throw down. There, you know, I, Montgomery's been threatening it. I spoke it into existence, Lance. I said, I was like, why not, James? Let one go. You got a good arm, you can get it down there. One ball, one strike, two outs. As you heard Rooney say, it's 1 1, not 2 0. As Ryan Malloy stands in. Like you said, we'll, we'll keep bringing it up, Lance. Big bat here. Huge bat. Let's hope, well, it, uh, says two on the let's hope it doesn't make a big connection here. Let's hope. Well, Lance, it says 3 0 on the scoreboard, so I'm going with 3 0. Oh, I'm seeing it. Yeah, ump. two one by the ump is what I'm seeing. So two balls and a strike now to Ryan Malloy. That one just missed. Three and one. And I mean just missed the lines. I thought I was gonna ring up strike three right there. Thought he was too. I thought that caught a piece of the corner. That's twisting into the crowd. Off the pavement. A souvenir for the fans. Well, <laughs> until Fenton Meyer gets up there. Yeah, I was going to say. It's a souvenir until Fenton Meyer gets over there. They can have it for however long that is. <laughs> well, he just got to it, so it wasn't very long. 20 seconds, maybe. So Fenton is quick. So Malloy's going to call time again at the plate. Fenton, also a basketball player, Lance. 
Yes, played JV, a little bit of varsity this year. I believe he played soccer kid. as well. Great kid. Runner goes. It was in the dirt, so nothing Montgomery can do there. Just yeah. got to stop the ball. So runners at first and second. Two outs. A very familiar position for Rooney. It's nothing he's not used to. So 20, you know, Gavin Chambers is going to continue to be the courtesy runner for Malloy. As now standing in, Boone Fahey. I like that name. Boone Fahey, I like that name too. The shortstop. Or the third baseman, I'm sorry. High for a ball. 1 0 now to Fahey. Ooh, Fahey takes a cut at that one, misses. One ball, one strike. Two outs. You know, to me, as I remember him, looking at Fahey's stance there in the, in the box, kind of reminds me of Carl Yastrzemski. A little bit, but from the right side. Oh. There's a hit and a half. Speaking of Yastrzemski. Yeah. And that's going to score. We're going to have a tight ball game. And Fahey's going to go to third. On the pass ball, man. Rooney couldn't have thrown much of a better pitch right there. No. Fahey, Fahey turned just it inside it. out. That's going to be a double and an error. That ball rolled forever out there before uh, who was Zendik. Zendik could get to it. Hit it straight to the gap. I... You really, you know, Lance, you can't hit the ball any better than that either. No, you cannot. I was just going to say, Lance, Howard on his way to the mound. This might be it for Rooney. And just like that, it is 2-2 here. This is either going to be a mound field. visit or Rooney's day might be done. We'll see what happens. Howard might just be having a conference with him, trying to settle his pitcher down with a runner still in a scary spot at third base. Big time hit. Big time hit right there. You know, this, this right here, Lance, goes to show you how much trust that these guys have in Rooney. Sticking with him. Keep it a bit. I don't blame I him I mean, we've bit. seen the Lyle thing pitch himself out of jams. We sure have. For the last few innings, but that so one that two great nothing, pitch, great hit. That 2 nothing Wildcat lead is erased. 2-2. Two, two. Top of the fifth. Two outs. Two outs at that. Two outs at that. That's when it really hurts, too. Well, it's any had two strikes on him, I believe, Lance. I think so, too. So first pitch to Robinson is high for a ball. I believe that was contact, so foul back. It'll be one and one. Hayes and Bats need to get something going. Wind gets blowing here. Vortex kicking in. Sure does. Oof, good pitch there by Rooney, two and one. What do you got brewing over there in Greensboro, Lance? The vortex over there. We'll uh, see what happens here. This is uh, two and one to Robinson. Gonna be interesting. Shot right up the gap in the center. Thetford will take the lead on that hit. That ball is gonna roll for a mile out there. Baker gets to it. Robinson. He gets it into rebound. And Robinson with a base hit, and just like that, the Thetford Panthers are lead, three to two. Howard coming out to the mound, and this is going to be all for Rooney today. Bit uh, a bit of irony going on right here, because yep. we talked earlier in the game. It was Thetford that knocked us out of the semis last year, and went way ahead. Hazen with the comeback fell short. Thetford behind here. Montgomery, you know Rooney coming out of the game and he has pitched a beauty today Lance, yes. he has pitched a beauty you know Lance until this inning you know you really can't ask for much of a better performance by Rooney there. Other than his no hitter against Williamstown on uh, this past Saturday, no he pitched so a, now, a great game. So now T-Rex T-Rex on the mound. He's going to come on in relief and you know Lance, if anybody wants redemption against the Stepford Panthers team it's Tyler Reaver. Yes indeed. I can tell you that. Oh. 
Revard, an excellent pitcher in his own right. I think Rooney is a little bit frustrated after that, but a lot of this, all this happening with two outs at the top sure of the Sure is. I mean, throwing good pitches. I mean, Lance, you know, eventually you just put a good swing to the ball. It's gonna, yeah, it's bound to happen eventually. But hey, you know, still got a lot of baseball to play, Lance. Exactly. Still a lot of baseball to play. It's only still anybody's ball game. Sure is. And trust me, we see how good these these wildcat bats can be. Get them to come alive. Get some of that aggressive base running going. And, sure uh, is. I think we need to get first first batter in the bottom half needs to get on though. You got to get something going right away. As like I said, Lance Revard really, or Rooney really pitched a great game. Not much, not much more he can do. No, the Lyle thing. So the Lyle thing's day is done. The T Rex's day starts on the mound at least. So he'll come on with two outs. So Rooney will inherit Robinson at second base. Here we go. Jacob Gilman stands in now. The left fielder for the Thetford Panthers. Big time two out rally for the Panthers. Or, I'm sorry, the center fielder for the Panthers. Yes, big two out rally. As like I said, Lance, the Thetford team is very good. They've put together a good program yeah, the last couple of years. Great program. back. I remember, Lance, my uh, my sophomore year of high school, the Thetford Panthers beat the Hazel Wildcats here to go to the Barry Auditorium, I believe, in basketball. I think you're right. I hate to bring it up. I hate to bring it up, but I think Thetford beat Hazen pretty handily that year, too. They did. They did. 0-2 oh, now. By a player who just graduated at Johnson. His name was Lawson Willett. Really good three-point shooter. He had a great Remember night. Remember that name. He had a great night that night. T-Rex on the mound looking for this third strike. Get this inning over with. And he and got it. Is. So Tyler Revard comes in, faces one batter, wastes little time. But now Lance, with the Wildcats trailing by a run, they need to start swinging the lumber at the plate. Or they I should say that. lumber, they aluminum. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Let me pull out our sponsor shirt here. The seeds are in the middle of the inning. Sponsors today, and you're getting your money's worth today. The Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and the Hardick Village Restaurant, 472-5701. Breakfast all day. You're watching semifinal action here from Hudson Fields on HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Jim on camera, Lance Hall on color, and Jam Master J, James Salvas, with the play-by-play. -play. We'll be right back, folks. As you see, the Hazen faithful getting going here, trying to get these Hazen Wildcat bats going. Well, I think that could help them out, get the crowd going here, it get sure the crowd could. into it. it we sure certainly could. saw the uh, Thetford crowd go uh, go off here when their team got going for going. And Tyler Revard, as good as any guy to start the inning. Yes, Marcia sir. Marshall winds and fires. A little bit of a high strike call, I think, there. In the picture that I have here, James, David Eckstein is wearing number 21. That sounds right. Well, here's one with him wearing number 22. Pitcher for the Cardinals, correct? Eckstein was a shortstop. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Sorry, yeah, she's thrown from the field, okay. I'm yeah. David Eckstein, infielder, yeah, number 22. Okay. He was part of that 2006 Cardinal World Series team. Oof, nice block behind the home plate, but it'll be three and one to Regard. You know, another player to uh, bring up who wears number 15 for the St. Louis Cardinals, a great center fielder in Jim Edmonds. If he's not, he's not in the Hall of Fame yet, but he certainly should be. Jim Edmonds is one of the best defensive center fielders I've ever seen. If that name rings a bell, Lance. Oh, uh, it does wear a bell. It does Jim, ring a bell, yes indeed. Jim Edmonds, big power bat for the Cardinals too. Great leadoff hitter on top of being a great center fielder. Had a cannon in center field. And Revard smokes one into left field. There we go, there's That's the start we hit. need. So I'm hoping that'll get something going for this Wildcat team as another great hitter. 
stepping in. And James Montgomery, Montgomery. son of Pam and Rob Montgomery. So Marsha still on the hill for the Panthers. He's gonna take a peek at Rivard at first base. He'll snap one over. Rivard dives back safe. So Montgomery trying to do the same thing Rivard did here, Lance, to get a pitch to hit. Marsha, another snap throw to first base, and Lance, I think the home plate, uh, the first base umpire might have bailed us out there. I think so as well. Ooh. Tyler, very yeah, lucky thought, to be back on I that I thought Rivard might have been hosed right there at first base. Well, he's gonna take a big lead again, Lance. Rivard not scared over there at first base. Montgomery has yet to see a pitch. Marsha winds and fires. Montgomery fouls it back, twisting, twisting. And down. So Montgomery hits that a mile high over here behind first. You saw Rivard was in motion, the old hit and run there. If that was a gap shot, Lance, let me tell you. That might have scored Rivard from first, because he's pretty quick for being a tall kid. That he is, he can move. Tyler back. That's tough too, Lance. When you dive back to first base, you're worried about getting stepped on and all that too. Ball coming in and hitting you and stuff yeah. like that. Because let me tell you, Lance, getting stepped on does not feel good. No. When somebody's wearing metal cleats. Probably not much better than getting hit by the ball. No. And Rivard does a good job getting in his head there at first base, a balk. So Rivard's gonna make his way to second base there. So he'll move up into scoring position. Man, second block of the day for Marcia. Thetford coach going out to uh, Maybe talk have to a mound visit or potentially he might have a new pitcher here, Lance. Rivard and Montgomery are gonna head down to have a conference with head coach Spencer Howard. Do you think it was Rivard over on first or the way that James had squared up the bunt so far in advance that, that drew the balk on him? Maybe both. So Marsha's day is done on the mound for the Thetford Panthers. So Pitched a good game. He really did. He really, you know, outside of that first inning, he really threw the ball well today. So Lance, I'll take a peek at their roster here and see who's taking over on the bump. And I will bring up another great St. Louis Cardinal, number nine, Enos Slaughter. Yep, Enos Slaughter. That's a blast from the past. Old school. And let's not forget the Dizzy D. Dizzy Dean, absolutely. Yeah. Pitcher, I believe. Yeah. I mean, in a couple years, Lance, I would not be surprised if you see number four, number 50, and number five out there in left field, too. For Wainwright, uh, Adam Wainwright, Yadier Molina, and Albert Pujols. All I, I think if I had to pick, and I, I don't, you know, I can't say as I'm a huge St. Louis Cardinals fan to know everybody that's played for them. You know, obviously, you know, the obvious ones. Bob but I Gibson think if, if, if I had to pick a favorite, I would go with Lou Brock. Great. Always a class act, great base stealer. I'm not he sure. He was Ricky Henderson before it, there was Ricky Henderson. Wasn't know? Lou Brock number eight? 20. So on the mound is going to be Mac Briglin Lance. All right. Well, we'll let Mac warm Panthers. up here, and I'm going to cool down. Same. We will mention 2004. Here we go. So we're back. It looks like Briglin's warm up is done on the mound. So Montgomery has no balls and a strike after he got uh, 
Marsha out of Bach, and I think inevitably took Marsha out. Nice bunt there by Montgomery. Throw high. Montgomery save. Rebound Here comes Tyler. Tyler. He dives and he saves. Tyler Revard with heads up base running, and he scores, and this ball game is tied up at three. Wow, we what a high baseball IQ play there by Tyler Revard. Let me tell you. Great hustle down the first baseline, too, by Montgomery. Montgomery was chugging down there to get it, and yeah, and minutes come in safe, and then Tyler, like you say, complete heads up. Cats known for their aggressive base running. I mean, Revard was on in the motion because he bunted, right. and I don't, I don't think Revard put the brakes on at all. I think he Scoring rounded all the way from second. Going. And I think Spencer Howard was waving him home, too. He said, go, kid, go. Man. Just a fabulous baseball play right there. No outs, bottom of the fifth. Cats come back you know, to Lance, tie this game at three. Lance, you know, if you think about it, that might have been a suicide squeeze. <laughs> Very well could have been. You know what that is, Lance? When you bunt and the runner steals home. That's right. That's a suicide squeeze. So, Lance, that very well could have been a suicide squeeze. Well, no, Tyler was a second. My fault. Wasn't he? Yeah, Tyler yeah, okay. was on second. I was going to say, Lance, a suicide squeeze, you just don't see that often. Not very you often. You've got to lay down a perfect bunt. Perfect. And you got to put it down the first baseline. So I would assume typically a suicide squeeze would happen to a lefty. Jaden Baker. First pitch strike to Baker. Fantastic. Baker gets a sign. Fantastic baseball here. Sure is. Both three, these three teams hand. just laying it out there. They are. You know Montgomery the, back easily. You know, the pitcher has a very, this pitcher has a very unorthodox kind of pickoff move. It's almost like he's taking a throw like if he's fielding it. For uh, Bricklin on the mound. As Baker trying to get a piece, something to hit. Montgomery, Montgomery. on the run. He saved. That was a real cheek squeezer, Lance, at second That pitch. was a cheek squeezer down there. I thought he was going to get, I thought they were going to nail him. I did Malloy too. with a great throw down to second. I'm not going to lie to you, Lance. That throw looked real good. Montgomery, man, he has got to be out of breath. He has made some. Hustle plays as a hitter. Maybe some dirt in his eyes down there from diving in. Yep. That's what you get when you dive in like Pete Rose sometimes. For those of you who don't know who Pete Rose is, he's been one of the biggest, part of the biggest scandals in baseball history, which cost him a spot in the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. He bat on the Cincinnati Reds in the 90s. You can't do that, folks. You can't bet on your own team. Did you see the trainer, Vinny, uh, Vin Ferrasi down there? Great trainer. His wife, uh, Lance, coaches the PA boys soccer team. Oh, I did not know that. And Angie is an outstanding coach, an outstanding woman. I will say, though, after all these years and for what Pete Rose did to the game, I think it's time to just reinstate him and put him in the Hall of the Fame where he should be. I mean, he had 4,000 something hits in his career. Like, that's something we're never gonna see again. The man was a baseball ambassador, you know? He was. And, uh, I mean, he's yeah. one of the great, whether, I mean, and it's not like he did steroids or anything either. No. He was just yeah. a, he was just a great hitter. Arguably, yeah. some I'm sure some people would say the greatest hitter of all time. Uh, one of the greatest players of all time, Charlie Hustle. You For know? sure, Charlie Hustle. I think it's I don't know where the nickname Charlie to... came from if his name was Pete. I think it's time to just uh, let him in. Let him in. I agree. You know, you want to put him in with an asterisk? Fine. Fine. But put him in. You know, I think, as much as I hate to say it, Lance, I think all those guys, Bonds and Clemens and them, are all going to get in someday, too. Because at the end of the day, yeah, they did steroids, but stats are stats. And again, put him in with an asterisk, you know? Yep, I mean, if it's you all... want to. Because without a doubt, what they did for the game was great at their time. You know, another really great hitter, too, that died young, Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you remember him 
Lance. Absolutely. Tony Gwynn, great. Minnesota Twins? No, Padres. Uh, Padres. Padres, yeah. Tony Gwynn Padres. played for the Padres his whole career. Great. Padres, yeah. Great left-handed hitter, first baseman, outfielder, fast. Did not swing for power, same as Pete Rose. Hit for next to no power, but got a lot of hits. Hit for a high average. Montgomery's still getting some attention for the dirt in his eyes over here in front of the dugouts. He is, hoping he's all right. Montgomery, a key player for the Hazel Wildcats. I don't know who would step in behind the dish. We don't have Little Shopper. Either. Little Shopper is down there, but he can't play. You know, 13, now that I think of it, Lance, for uh, the Thetford, Thetford catcher, uh, Mike Piazza, yeah. number 13. Or no, maybe he was 30. He was 31. I believe he played on the Cardinals very briefly. No? He played on the Athletics, the Dodgers, the Mets. I would say most notably known for his time with the New York Mets. But Mike Piazza, great player, Hall of Famer, catcher. So we have a courtesy runner coming in. Yep. It's going to be Wyatt Flanders. It is. I believe Montgomery will stay in the game, but yeah. Flanders is just going to come in and pinch runs. Needs a little extra attention. He is, as you see, Sperry is John Sperry, the man of many talents. Running to Hazen Eaton. Hopefully, maybe Montgomery got a little cut up, but a 1-1 count to Baker from Brickland. Flanders has got his lead from second base. No outs. No outs. Flanders, I think, saw that pickoff coming from about a mile away. Yeah. He could have seen that from... He's not fooled by that. He could have seen that from Hardwick Elementary. And Flanders in for the game, 30 seconds. He's got his uniform dirty. Sure is. Oof. Baker. Baker, wayward bunt there, foul. So. One and two, he's not bunting any more, Lance, because if he bumped with two strikes and he goes foul, that is steer right three. We'll see him swing away. We will. We will. I would, I would not be surprised, Lance, to see a hit and run in place. Which is one thing the Wildcats do oh so well. And he ropes that one, foul. So the count remains one and two. Jaden Baker. And Baker rockets one left field. Howard is going to send Flanders. Baker into second. Flanders scores. And your Wildcats back in the lead, four to three. Left fielder had trouble getting a handle on that ball out there, or else Flanders would have been held up at third. He Did believe. he go to throw and have it slip, or just, like, bringing it up, or what? He kind of bobbled it out there, and that gave Flanders the opportunity to come in. You know, Lance, I'm not sure, but I believe that might go down as an E7 out there. On I the think field. it could. I couldn't quite, you know, I, I saw the ball him grab it, and then it go up in the air. So that'll and be Spencer a was waving Wyatt the whole way in. So that'll be a base hit and an RBI. Nice Baker, to, nice to see Wyatt won. Flanders get in on that scoring opportunity. Sure Wyatt, uh, one of the other seniors. He is. He's year. played some. He's played a good outfield this season too. Our seniors graduating are Tyson, Wyatt, uh, Asia, and Jazz. Yep. So very cool to see Wyatt Flanders get that run to give the Cats a 4-3 lead now in the bottom of the fifth. As you see, John Sperry hustling there. So they're still administering to uh, Montgomery down there. Had a bloody nose, I believe. Maybe some blood on the jersey, Lance? Something. Nonetheless, Baker at second. Rooney at the plate. Still no outs. Brickland. Rooney pulls back the bunt. Baker slides. He is safe. Oh, baby, what a slide by Jaden Baker. He's got he in it. I think he, he snuck his arm in underneath there. He did. He did the old, uh, you know who was known for that? Dustin Pedroia was a wizard at avoiding the tag. Great, great second baseman for the Red Sox. In my opinion, the greatest second baseman in Red Sox history. Definitely the best I've ever seen. And Dustin Pedroia, one of my all-time favorites. So he, he used to slide in like that for the Red Sox. He would dive in, bring up the arm, go under it, over it, around it. Whatever it took, Baker with a masterful move out there to get oh, in yeah. there third. Oh, Rooney rockets one down towards the Thetford fans over there behind third base. Looking down and left, you better be uh, keeping an eye on that one. You know, Lance, the hill didn't used to look like that over there in left field. They put in that drain and stuff over there. Yeah, it used to be pretty wet over there. It did. It used to be a swamp. 
Pitch high. That's high. Two and one now to Rooney from Bricklin. Ooh, inside for a ball. Nice eye by Rooney. That looked good. Thought that caught a piece of the corner there, Lance. Three and one now to Rooney. That's in there. Ball. Draws the walk. Here comes Zendik. Zendik, you know he wants to put the barrel to the ball right here. So hits a big time fouls there. In we have. At bat. You know Zendik wants to hit one 80, 80 feet. I don't know what I was trying to say there, Lance. He wants to hit the ball hard. He sure does. Lance wants to hit that one down to Buffalo Mountain Market. Formerly Hall's Market for you longtime Hardwick residents. Just heard somebody down on the Hazen bench say, send it, Zendik. <laughs> I agree. Great number two, number 21. First baseball player that comes to mind when I think of number 21, the great Roberto Clemente. Rooney, he's in stand. Stand up. Baker back, ball goes by. And that ball is out of play, so Baker is going to trot sure. on home for free. We love free bases, Lance. And uh, we love free runner runs. advances to third as well. Yep. Oh, they're Rooney's going to go gonna come home. home as well. More runs on the board. We love free runs, Lance. We love free runs. Three of them we've gotten today. It is. So, Hazen with a little insurance, they're back up two. Five to three. That's some Calderwood insurance. Two right runs, there. we should be up six, right? Or the score was four three. Yes, there it is, okay. There it is, okay. Six, there we three. go, we got some insurance. Three to, uh, six to three lead for the Wildcats. And but Bricklin out of the game. Crazy ways of seeing us, you know, we had that Bach call early that yep. gave us a run. That scored Revard. Yeah, and then that play there that brought in two runs. Or no, so, uh, no, the Revard scored on the Montgomery yeah. single to tie, to tie it. The Bach call. I think that brought in Tyson, didn't yes, it? Yes, the Bach call brought in Tyson. So, uh, oh, when all is said and done, there are still no outs. And here another the new pitcher the for Thetford. Cats up 6 3. So Thetford's going to find, find another new hurler on the mound. And speaking of Greg Maddox, number 31, that was his number. Greg Maddox, one of the all time greats. I do not know baseball numbers all that well. Wow. I mean, you mentioned 21, the first person I thought it was Deion Sanders. That was the number he wore with the Cowboys, but I have True. no idea what, what number he wore on the baseball diamond. Pretty sure he was still 21. He was? I think so. Lance, fun fact about Deion Sanders. Did you know he's the first person to play in a Super Bowl and a World Series? I did not know that. In the same season? I did not know that. I had a friend. I have a few Neon Sanders baseball cards. I've got a Deion Sanders Cowboys jersey. Um, neon Deion. I had a friend who lived in Fort Myers who went out with a guy who was in high school at the same time that Dion was. Dion went to high school in Fort Myers. Yep. And, you know, he sort of didn't know him well, well enough to say hey in the, in, you know, in the hallway. It was about it. And yep. just said he was a tremendous athlete even back then in high school. I wonder if he played baseball in high school. I would imagine he did. Um, so Lance, I'll have to check and see if I got any more updates from PA. Why don't you do that while this next... The uh, well, rumor around town is that they may be headed to the state championship. James, if there's anyone who'll find out, it'll be you. Jim Master J. So Zendik stands in, waiting for the delivery. Still no outs. Uh, nothing for a count yet. Nothing for a count. No, he hasn't faced the pitch. Oh, yeah, Lance, I also got to see who's throwing, who's the new hurler for the Thetford Panthers. Well, his first pitch. Zendik, big cut. 
Number 31 for the Thetford Panthers is on the mound. That is Xander Clark. And that'll be a ball, one on one. So Xander Clark on the mound. Nobody on the bases for the catch. We ended up wiping those clean on that wild throw. Sure did. Zendik, he'll rocket that one foul. He's had a couple of those hard hit fouls. Puts the count at one and two. So Clark winds and delivers. Inside for a ball. That is going to be two and two. We've seen those called strikes. Sure have. Clark winds and fires. Swing and a miss, so Zendik goes down swinging. The Mahler, Menard. I believe he got a base hit to... Great hit last night, yeah, slapped it right up the middle. He did, hit it hard. Let's see what the Mahler can do. PA won six nothing right at the ship. PA has won six nothing. Yes. So the winner of this game will face the People's Academy Wolves this Saturday. At That's Centennial Field. And another one there, but oh, nice play nice by play. the shortstop. Oh, Marsha made a nice play there, Lance. Really Hit nice hard. play. He Turn around, didn't throw back. Got Menard. Speaking of Ozzie Smith, that was Ozzie Smith esque. It was. Dan DeGroslier up now yes, for Dan the Cats. Two DeGrosley. outs, bottom of the fifth. Cats doubled up the Panthers 6-3. First pitch ball high by Clark. So Menard, man, he got robbed of a base hit there because he hit that ball hard too. He did, great play by the shortstop. As you called him last year, Lance, double D. Double D. Dan DeGroslier. Yes. Man, if you folks, whenever you folks get a chance to rewatch this, you are going to be seeing a good one, I can tell you Fun that. Fun baseball game today. Oh! Man, Clark gave uh, Dan Rosley a little brush a. back. He gave him a little sweet chin music on the Shawn Michaels. There's a strike, three and one. Good, you know, take in there, like I would say. Oh, yeah. 3-0, you got to take it. Speaking of Shawn Michaels, Lance, you may disagree with me on this, but Shawn Michaels, in my opinion, the greatest in-ring performer in the history of the WWE. Uh, Grosley, I take goes to first, brings up Asia Gould. I will dispute you on that. Uh, the first, uh, The Rock comes to mind right off here. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Ric Flair. Uh, Ric Flair, I mean, he was in the WWE, more known for, for NWA. Yeah. Definitely had his moments in the WWE. Sure did. First pitch by Clark is a strike. He Clark was the showstopper, though. Sure was. There's a high shot out to right, and that's going to drop in. As Double D is going to move up to third and hold there. The runners at the corner with two outs. Base hit for Gould and Tyson Davison making his way in. We see Tyson make some nice contact today. Tyson. We have Slicing Tyson. Slicing Tyson Davison. Yes, Montgomery did have blood on his jersey, I believe, Lance, because he's normally 17 and he's got 16 on right now. But Davison at the plate, Clark from the set, runners at the corners. Ball high, runner goes. No throw. No throw. I'm surprised, honestly. Yeah, I was surprised. The catcher was gonna throw that. Yeah, I mean. Seemed like uh, he had time to make a throw down. Aisha didn't have a huge jump out there, so. No, Aisha, Aisha didn't have a huge lead at first base, so surprised not to see a throw go. 
Oh, speaking of slicing Tyson. Davison. He'll slice one to center. center. Oh. Caught. That was a can of corn out there in center. It was a can of corn. So a wild fifth inning right there. Puts the Cats up six to three. Uh, Bedford had gone up in the top. Cats come back in the bottom. That's exactly what the Cats needed, Lance. Is this yeah. You know, I said just one opportunity to get the bats going. And we know these wild cats can swing it. So Cats leading 6-3. We'll be back top of the sixth in a few moments. All right, here we go, top of the sixth. Thetford took the lead and then lost the lead there in the fifth. Let's see if they can come back now. Revard trying to channel his inner uh, Trevor Hoffman or maybe Mariano Rivera. Tyler only had to throw three pitches in his uh, initial outing here. He sure did. Back in the uh, top of the fifth. I'll see who's at the plate, Lance. Is that Boone? It is Parkman. Parkman. Okay. Mitchell Parkman. Who started things back there. At the top of the fifth. He did, Mitchell Parkman. He is the left fielder. That's fouled into the seats. That'll scoot away to the school. Two and two. That's fouled back too. That one's gonna get in the tree though. <laughs> yeah, Lance. Uh, two and two to the count. Yeah, Parkman doing a good job to fight here at the plate. Oh, that Ooh. one will hit him. Revard not happy with himself. You know, nothing intentional there. Just no, just trying to overpower. Hands. I mean, two strikes. I mean, why that, would you want to? Why would you want to hit him? You know, right? That must be frustrating for Thetford, though. They've had three batters plunk today. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, both of Rooney's were not intentional, especially not the one in the head. But regardless, now Parkman up at first. As Dempsey McGovern in the in the hit now. What a name, like you said, Lance. What a name. That's hit. Twisting, twisting. Oh, Rooney, Rooney, what a play. Making the play from short. The Lyle thing over there at shortstop. Slide and grab. Slide and grab. I mean, Beautiful play. I mean, this guy can do it all, Lance. Great shortstop, he is a complete great baseball pitcher. Player. Great hitter. He's really what you would call a five-tool player. That he is. Which in baseball is hitting speed, defense, power, and contact. Or power, contact, speed, fielding. First pitch ball there. Ooh, looked good there. Has Ethan Marsha the leadoff hitter in. 2-0 to him. One out, top of the six, throw to first. Nice pickoff move by Revard. Keep the parkman safe. honest over there. Sure is. So it's going to stay 2-0 to Marcia. Reverb kicks and fires. That is in there for a strike. I was going to say, Lance, if that's not a strike, I don't know what is. That was beautiful. Two balls and a strike now to Reverb, or to Marcia from Reverb. Nice, great block by Montgomery. I can't keep reiterating it enough, Lance, how great of a defensive catcher yeah. Montgomery is behind home plate. Good athlete, just in general. Definitely does everything that you want a great defensive catcher to do. Certainly. Blocks the ball, makes great throws. That's high for ball four, so. Revard in a bit of trouble here. With one out. And Nolan Pepe stands in. Cats will be looking to turn the double play. They sure are. They're gonna look to get him to roll one to the right side here, maybe to Tyson Davison, hopefully. Wind oh. picking up just a little bit now. Sure is. Yeah, 
That's a beautiful pitch by Rebard. Right down the right down the pipe for a strike. Man, Rebard had something on that one. That it hit you and leave a two foot hole coming out, Lance. Sure would. That's rope foul. Two and two the count. Fenton Meyer on his horse. Rivard now, he'll wind and fire. That's rope to center field. Baker! Oh, Makes what a catch. grab! Jaden Baker! And, and they're gonna get the runner at second to turn the double play. Jaden Baker! Laid out there, oh, what a catch! And to get the throw in to pick the runner off at second base. You know, speaking of Jim Edmonds, that was a Jim Edmonds-esque play That's out there. That's a in fantastic field. play. The crowd is what comes Isaiah, alive on that one. The butcher, the baker, the home run robber. <laughs> the butcher, the playmaker. The, the butcher, the baker, the playmaker. What a play. And that ends the inning for the Panthers. That'll bring the Cats up. Sure will. What a, what a play. Just, man, that, that ball was Smoke. scooped off the ground. It sure was. Our, you know, let me read off our sponsors. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hayes Athletics. And Harding Village Restaurant, 472 breakfast all day. You're watching Hayes and Union semifinal action here on HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. James, Anyways, what do we say? What I was going to say there, Lance, is, you know, when your pitcher is kind of struggling on the mound, you know, you need your defense to come through. Okay. Yeah, the We're going to take a break and uh, change batteries here. Okay. We're back, folks. Clark is going to remain on the mound for the Thetford Panthers. What I was saying is good to see the Hazen defense behind the pitcher. And speak of the devil, the pitcher, T-Rex, Tyler Rivard at the plate. This has been as, as great as a complete team game as, as what you could ask for. Shows bunt, pulls it back for a strike. Once again, Jam Master J with the play-by-play. -play. Lance Hall with the color and Jim on camera. Legendary Lance Hall on color, folks, for you guys keeping notes at home. Legendary game right here. First of its kind, sure the is. first semifinal game that Hazen Union has ever hosted <laughs> Lance, here at Hudson Fields. That pitch looked good. Tyler moved out of the way. It caught, it caught a piece of the corner, but only one one. Cats up 6-3, bottom of the sixth. That's high for a ball. Good eye by Rivard, 2-1. See if they so can like add we to said, their lead. Like we said, Lance, the winner in this game is going to be headed to Centennial Field to take on the defending champion People's Academy Wolves on Saturday. What a game. Oh, be and there's a rocket to center field. Oh, nice catch by nice, the center Nice field. adjustment. Very good range. Great it looked like it was yeah. going to get over his head in the air. Yeah, I thought it was. He backed up, made a great play. He got back and made a nice play. He did. Nice uh Th those are hard, Lance, because sometimes you misread it in the air and then you just got to reposition yourself if you want to. When it's hit that hard, yeah, you think it's going to go by and then it kind of dropped down a little if bit. If that had been through, that might have been at least a double. That's low to number 16, James Montgomery, at least to right. him being 17. We had, the, uh, we had the uniform change. Sure did. But good to see Montgomery stay in the game, nonetheless. Yeah, he made a hard slide into second out there. And ended up coming up uh, bloody. Sure did. One and one now to him from Clark. You know, Lance, maybe he, uh, I don't know, maybe his face got a bit of the base or something, or maybe he got hit on the Hard pad. saying, yeah. Really hard to tell. That's outside, good eye. Two and one now to Montgomery. The maestro, James Martin. That's inside for a ball, three and one. I like that. I don't know if it really fits him, but. The maestro, the, the catching maestro. maestro. Yeah. The maestro, James Montgomery. And nice job by Montgomery to draw the walk. So Hazen's gonna get a base runner with one down. Come on, buddy, here we go. And now the, and now one of the most feared hitters in the Wildcat lineup, their cleanup, their cleanup man, Jaden Baker. But we so, saw just make an incredible defensive play out yeah. there. Jaden Baker, you know, in between innings, Lance, I had a chance to catch up with Mike the Man Baker over there, and I said, you teach him that one, Mike? 
And he said, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but Lance said he's, er, but Mike said he's like, you know, just a great play. And Mike's right. His son made a heck of a catch in center field. And then to have the presence to throw the ball in to, to get the runner. Exactly. The runner gone. They thought he was at it home, you know? Yeah. You know, you can't really blame the base runner there, Lance. That's mm. a tough, you know. I probably would have sent him too, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. Hit like that. You think he's going to drop, and then right at the last, you know, millisecond, Baker makes the catch right off the you And know, then just top had the, the easy double play. Like that was might have been on a grass clipping and Baker, because I didn't, at first I didn't think Baker was going to get there. No. And then he laid out, and scooped. Laid, it. Uh, yeah, he laid out about as far as you can lay out. Yeah, he sure did. And he's not very tall, Lance. No. Oh man, talk about a good pitch, Clark with one right there. That was about as pretty a pitch as you could ask for right there, Clark right down the pipe. Clark winds and fires. Baker and runs it to left field. Montgomery's going to go to third. Montgomery was breaking right at the crack of the bat. Perfect hit and run. He was. So he'll move from first to third. And Baker with another hit. As you saw, Howard had to hold Montgomery there. Not enough space for him to go yeah. home. I mean, James is fast, but not that fast. No. One out. The you Lyle be, thing. The Lyle thing at the plate. You got to be, uh, you probably would have had to be Ricky Henderson fast to score on that. Yeah. As they'll just make the throw down to the shortstop there, I think they realized they probably weren't going to be able to get Baker in motion. The uh, last inning we had runners in this position and all kinds of wild throws happened. We ended up having two guys kind of trot in and yeah, it was crazy. Inside, looked like a good pitch at least, Lance, but it'll be 2-0, they say, to the Lyle thing, or 1-0. I believe that was the first pitch to Lyle. They say 2-0 on the board, but I think it's 1-0. Ooh, swing and a miss. Wicked swing right there. Sure was. Oh, it is 2-1. Okay. I really like that nickname a lot, Lance, the Lyle thing. Yeah, that's a good one. Sure is. He fouls that one back. Gonna go two and two. One out. I think last year I called him Lyle the Rocket Rooney, but I like the Lyle thing better. That's a great eye right there. That is a Inside. hard pitch to lay off on a pitch that I think I've seen called a strike today. Three and two. Full count to Rooney. He's got runners in scoring position. Two ducks on the pond. Oh, wow. he draws the walk. Bases are drunk with Wildcats. And oh, would Jazz Zendik love to get his bat on a ball here? He would. He got robbed of an RBI last time because of the walk. Or robbed of an RBI chance, I should say. Lance, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad I grabbed this shirt today because I almost grabbed, uh, I have a black people's baseball shirt too, so I'm, I almost grabbed that, and that probably would not have been good. Well, yeah, I think I think uh, that was good. Oh, Zendik rockets one to left field. If it stays fair, foul. it's gone, but it's going to go foul. We've seen him do that a couple times. Sure has. He's a hit the ball. A little too much of a turn. He's hits hit it ball. a ton. He does. <laughs> this guy hits it like Pedro Serrano. Of course, out there in left, you get that little bit of a dip or it dips down and it goes back up as well. So yes, you're in the left fielder, it's, it's kind of a tough play to make. You know, but if it's right down the line too, Lance, that's a little shorter than if you hit it to straightaway left. So it might just poke into the trees there if you really hook it right down the line. Zendik fouls that one back. So it's going to be one and two to Zendik from Clark. Another one fouled back by Zendik. Man, Lance, he does a great job to protect at the plate. Fighting the ball off, yep. He is. Wind picking up just a tiny bit here. Sure is, that vortex is picking up. 
Another one, Lance. That one's twist and foul. And I heard a pretty good thunk on that one. I did, hopefully no windshield broken or too serious damage. Well, Lance, that was a truck fortunately, so it maybe landed in the bed. Maybe. Let's hope. Clark winds and fires. That's outside for a ball, nice eye by Zendik. Two and two. Base is loaded. Two outs, two and two. Inside for a ball, three and two. Man, Lance, there has been some close, close ball close calls. Close balls, yeah. That very easily but, uh, could have we'll give it. Three. We'll give the home umpire credit. He's called them consistent. Sure has. That one's low, gonna walk in a run. So there's Jazz Zendix RBI. Yes, Lance, I, that's a new fact that I came to know. If you are at home plate and the bases are loaded and you get walked, it is an RBI. It's an RBI. So Montgomery scores, seven to three Wildcats. And up now, Andrew the Mahler Menard. And are we gonna have a pitching change or just a conference? Here in the bottom of the six, Cats up now, seven three. Well, Lance, it looks like it's gonna be a pitching change. It is. It is. So the Thetford Panthers, Lance, I believe are gonna be on the pitcher number four. This is either four or five for them. I believe it's the fourth. Yeah, this is going to be the fourth Thetford Panther to step on the bump today. So, I'll take a uh, quick peek at who that is, Lance. Since the Wildcats are batting, I don't really have to look at the roster too much unless there's a pitcher. That is going to be Wyatt Cadwell. So Cadwell is going to take over on the hill. We'll be right back, folks. So Cadwell, the new pitcher. Cadwell on the mound for Thetford. Andrew the Mahler Menard is going to stand in at the plate. So Cadwell with a very high windup. He's going to kick and fire. Oof. Well, hi. You know what, James? I'm going to stand up here for a few moments. You know, Lance, I don't blame you. I've done it the whole time. See what's happening? Yeah, you're. Well, you're a lot younger than I am. So. <laughs> Lance, if you watch the, uh, if you watch Cod, uh, Cadwell on the mound, he has a very uh, weird windup. He kind of has kind of that little, like, kick yes. at the end. He has Let's a little kind of like hitch in his windup a little bit. Uh, pitcher Cadwell, he kind of kicks a little bit at the end. It's a very unorthodox windup, but whatever works. So we got bases still drunk. Oh yeah. The ball are at the plate. Bases Just one out. Bases. Two and one. Bases are hammered. Bases man. are hammered. Yeah, there's <laughs> the bases are absolutely. The stopped. bases are officially members of the South family. They are. Oh wow. Man, Lance, you just missed a big cut by Menard. He was swinging for water and uh, he was swinging for Hardwick Electric on that one. <laughs> Uh, I remember when I was standing up, I didn't want to block. Oh, oh Menard wow. Lopes one to left field. That's down. <laughs> Multiple runs. There's one. There's two. Coming in the third down. So the Wildcats pile them on here, Lance. The Mahler. As the Wildcats pile them on here, Lance, it's a 9-3 to three Wildcat lead. What a hit by Andrew the Mahler Menard right after the pitching change. And this hazing crowd has erupted. Going crazy here. It is. As Andrew Menard is going to pick up the two RBI double. Oof. Puts Zendik at third. Sure does. Other two runners score. 9-3. It is. With still uh, uh, two outs, Lance. One out. One out. One out. Double D at the plate. We've got to get the scoreboard reset as there's a bunch of lights over there. We do. There we go. There it is. One and oh. From Cadwell to Double D, Dan DeGroslier. And DeGrosselier pokes that one foul. Oh, nice grab by 
Two Tyler Rezard. Looks like Calvin. Looked, looked like Calvin Johnson from Matt Stafford <laughs> did. back in the day. Or uh, LaDainian Tomlinson from Odell. Odell. Odell Beckham. Odell from Eli. That's low for a ball. Two and one. And you know, when, when the bases were loaded there, I had to bring up the Souse family just briefly because, as you know in the song, they're the best family that ever came over from old Germany. And that was a song that I heard the late, great Richard Whitey Brochu sing many times at many events. Yes. And they're going to get Zendik. And they're going to catch Andrew. But in the end, so in the end, though, we're still going to pick up some runs. They are. And uh, Zendik, I think, uh, you know, Lance, I think Menard might have been able to scurry back. He just lost his yeah. footing a little bit. Though. And, of course, we lost Richard this past week. We did. Rest in peace to Richard, who was yeah, a... Absolutely. If, if you want to talk Mr. Civic, uh, the mayor of Hardwick. Yes. There was, there was nothing. He was one of the most civic-minded people I ever knew. Yes, and Rich. Uh, his, his loss will be felt throughout the community. Sure will. Brochure Sitco Service downtown. Absolutely. Long time garage. Long time, uh, they do a lot of barbecues as well. Inside. Richard did, did it all. And, he sure uh, did. Just a, a great, great man. It was like uh, when we lost Dave Morse and Charlie yep. Smith, two huge pillars of the community. Yes. So Thetford now down to their last three outs, trailing by six. As they As move you're to here, the top PA of the seven. Faithful is getting going. Or this Hazen nice. Faithful, I'm sorry. Well, once again, we've never experienced anything like this here. You know, you first ever semifinal game yes, from Hudson Fields. First ever baseball semifinal field from Hudson And James, Field. remind us, I know you are dying to tell us. The winner of the game faces who in the final Saturday at Centennial Field? My alma mater, the People's Academy Wolves. Jim Master Jay Self is here on Play by Play. Lance Hall with the color. Jim on camera. And we have been treated to a game here today. We certainly have. Little home cooking. This is as for good. The cats. This it's game is as good as the 82 St. Louis Cardinals. Speaking of red and white, you know. Now the Cardinals at 82, was that, they played who in the, was it Kansas City? Brewers. Back when that was won. the call, right? The, the For those of you who don't know, the Milwaukee Brewers are a National League team now. That is when they were in the American League. Right. The Brewers play in the NL Central now. When I think of the Brewers, I always think of Robin Yount. I was just about to say Robin Yount. A, a bastion of consistency. And you want to talk about a great defensive shortstop as well. Yes. Robin Yount. Robin Yount. Hall of Famer. Robin Yount. So T-Rex on the mound looking to uh, get these final three outs and send the Cats to the championship game. He's trying to send these Panthers packing. Gonna be a... Oof, three good pitches in a row, Lance. Three and oh now, Revard's got a battle. You know, Lance, when you do the starting lineups for basketball, the way you say Tyler Revard's name is like none other. <laughs> There's a strike. The way you say his last name is the best I've ever heard. I appreciate that, James. And, and for those of you watching at home, I'll say it. I say it all the time. Lance Hall is the best starting lineup announcer you will ever hear. So, I, I appreciate that very much, James. So this winner, if you guys are ever up in the Hardwick area and you want to come to the Wildcat Den, take a listen to Lance Hall. Check it out. I'm sure, I'm almost 100% positive he will be back on the call. Oh, I will be. And in the fall for soccer. Looking for, I mean, you figure. Strike by Rezard. Yes. It's not gonna be long. You know, as no. crazy as it sounds, August. two and a half months. Foul yeah. back. HCTV will get a two and a half month break from sports after today. Man, am I glad that backstop's there on that one. Oh, well, let me tell you, Lance, I was coming straight for us if it weren't. Two strikes. Two strikes. Rivard lines and fires. Well, high. Runner advances. That ball gets by. I mean, you figured Thetford's going to let it all hang out. What do they got to lose, you know? Right. 
If they're going to go for it, they might as well go for it now. Exactly. Well, go down they, swinging, go down running. You said they got nothing to lose. So at this stage in the game, Lance, you got to take chances. And that does take away the double play. It does. Or so you'd think, anyways, unless you get a play like what happened with Baker in the outfield. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It takes away the ground ball double play. Great block by Montgomery. Two and two. Revired here. Revired's got to uh, come up with something here, Lance. He's Get got this third strike and Get that first out, get this thing rolling away. Poked on the ground. Davison on to Gould, but a Thetford Panther will move up 90 feet to third base. With one down, Lance, the Hayes and Wildcats are two outs away. Two outs away from going to the championship game. And, and also, Lance, I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to Spencer Howard what a, and his whole staff, Joe Revard, Opie Upson, what a great job they've done turning this Hazen baseball program around. Those went, guys have really, yeah, got us back on the map. Went and, from, uh, you know, a mid to bottom bottom of the pack team when I was in high school yeah. to semis last year. And it was Slim Pickens getting guys to come out for baseball for, for a while. It sure was. I want to mention our sponsors, too, one more time. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazel Athletics in the Hardwick Village Restaurant, 472-5701. Breakfast all day. You know, Lance, we, could, we really got to thank our sponsors. They're what helped keep us going. We could not be us without them. And of Swing course- Swing and a miss. That's so, strikeout for Revard. Two outs. We also want to thank all our technical people, Liz, uh, Jim. Griff. Griff, Leaf. Leaf. Who is no longer with HCTV, but you know, really brought Hazen Sports On up map. to another level. And really his work there. made HCTV big. One out away. As Justin Robinson stands in now for the Thetford Panthers. Waiting for a chance of warm up the bus to start. Doesn't really need to be warmed up, maybe get it started. Maybe fire it up. Fire up the bus. Although, Lance, you know, it ain't over till the fat lady sings, or so they say. That's right. It was a Yogi Berra said, it ain't over till it's over, right? Right. Well, I tell you what, the count's what, three and one? Two and one. Two and one, two outs. Yogi Berra also said, if you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> that looked good on the corner. That looked like it was in the same location, Lance. Three and one. Three and one. The Hazen faithful getting going, Lance. Trying to will Revard on here. When we get that third out, this place is going to erupt. Swing and a miss. So oh, the Panthers down one to the final One strike, strike away. Revard trying to channel his inner Mariano Rivera, who, in my opinion, the greatest closer of all time. Of all time. Enter the Sandman. Oh, good pitch by Revard. Ball four. And this hazing crowd was about ready to storm Hudson Field. They were. <laughs> they were about ready, let me tell you, Lance. Now I gotta look at the roster again. Figure out who this is. Number 10, that's Parkman, isn't it? Jacob Gilman. Oh, Jacob Gilman, okay. High twisted fly ball towards short third base. Menard and under it. He punched it away the for the first time since 2007. Go on to the championship game. Spencer Howard made it there as a player, and now he'll make it there as a coach. That might be the first time in Hazen history that that's happened. So it will be the Hazen Union Wildcats, the number one seed, taking on the number three seed, People's Academy Wolves, this Saturday for the Division Three Championship what? baseball game. What a old vintage rivalry game that's gonna be. And sweet revenge for the Wildcats it this is. year to knock out the Thetford Panthers who knocked them out last year. And sweet revenge also for Tyler Revard who got shelled against them last year. I'm gonna have to give my player of the game award today, Lance Hall, to Lyle Rooney. Pitched a great game, kept the Wildcats in it, but 
You know, I, I'd have to give it to all of them. I, I'm going to give it. I'm going to say I'm going to give it to the whole team. Just a great team, team effort. Defense, offense, pitching, you name it. Coaching, everybody came up on that one. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. As always, I'm James Salvis. I'm Lance Hall. Jim on camera. Thank you guys for a great season. We'll, we'll see, see you in the fall. Come this fall for soccer. Till then, live every moment, love every day. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.